I'd like to welcome everyone to London City Council meeting. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silent reflection. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Eats? Here. Mr. Peters? Here. Mr. Robinson? Here. Mr. Hayes? Present. Mr. Hitt? Here. All right, Mr. Stahl? Present. Good to see all the seated council members here this evening. Uh, have you all had a chance to take a look over our minutes from the last meeting? All, right. all in favor of approving those minutes, say aye. 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 All right, opposed, same sign. All right, and we do have a public hearing this evening, so we can get a motion to enter our public hearing. Make a motion to enter public hearing. A second. Okay. First and second for public hearing. Uh, Mr. Eads? Yes. All right, Mr. Peters? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Stahl? Yes. Mr. Hitt? Yes. We have now entered our public hearing, uh, beginning with Ordinance 20422, a motion to read by title or number. So moved. Second. Right. Sorry. Ordinance 20422, sponsored by Andrew Hitt, an ordinance amending official zoning map. So this is a property that is uh, along Cherry Street, West First Street, and the railroad tracks out by the football field. And the plan is to use that to develop um, storage buildings. And the legislation is to change the zoning from M1 to a PUD. And tonight is public hearing for that. Okay. And I think we may have a couple people here this evening to speak on this. We have uh, uh, Bob Minner, are you here to speak on? Yes. Yes, okay. If you just uh, come to the podium and state your name and address, please, and you have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Robert Minner, 246 East High Street, London, Ohio. Uh, I don't know that I need five minutes. I really wasn't prepared to give a speech on it. I thought I was a little more on question and answer. but. Um, Purchased the property at 130 West High is the official address, the old Shaw Elevator, uh, two and a half years ago. Was not sure what I maybe would want to do with it. Uh, I have owned a self-storage property in the past, and I now manage uh, my mother and father's uh, on their behalf. And I know there's more demand for the, there's more need for it in the city. Um, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, obviously, but it's there's more need for it in the city. I know from the daily phone calls I get for people needing to rent them. And with the expansion of London's residential, I think it's only going to grow. So I, my hope is to develop that property that's sat vacant for 25, 30 years and uh, make it into something with both, both a tax base for the city of London and obviously some financial improvement to myself. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Minner? All right, thank you. And then also we have uh, Alan Knowles. Do you have some? Yeah. Oh, were you, did you have something for this one? No, you have a separate one. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Do we have any further discussion on 20422? All right. Thank you. On to ordinance 20522, a motion to read by title or number. So moved. Second. And a second. All right. Ordinance 20522, sponsored by John Stahl, an ordinance amending official zoning map. Can I go ahead? Yes. This is uh, land on a corner of uh, East Center Street and uh, Maple. 
and it's borders by the uh, Ohio Erie Trail, and they plan on doing a, can't think what's called. Bed and breakfast. Bed and breakfast. Bed and breakfast. Huh? Bed and breakfast, Bed and breakfast yes, pass me by. <laughs> And it's right across from M&M, and oh, okay. a lot of people go by there. <laughs> okay, and uh, this one, Mr. Knowles, do you have something to add here? Thank you for being here. Um, Alan Knowles, 271 Hume Drive. Um, the purpose of rezoning is to put in a bed and breakfast that's now zoned M1. And this will be something that will cater to trail traffic, uh, bike tourism, but it'll also uh, benefit other people coming into town. So, how many uh, rooms? Rooms will four. You four. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any further questions? Yeah, where exactly is this, Mr. Knowles? It's across Maple Street from the M and M Diner. So in that vacant lot, in the yes. point right there. Yes. Okay. And. You know, have enough room there for... It's an acre lot. Okay. Do you foresee any any traffic problems, anything like that? I don't. It's not going to be that big. It's yeah, <laughs> I agree. I'm yeah. just asking. Okay, any further questions for Mr. Knowles? All right, thank you. All right, if we have no further questions for, for our public hearing, I'd like a motion to exit our public hearing. Motion to exit public hearing. Second. All right, first and second. Uh, Mr. Eads? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Hitt? Yes. All right, and Mr. Stahl? Yes. All right, we have now exited our public hearing. Uh, we're moving on to communications and announcements. Uh, I have received a request for a liquor license at uh, renewal at the London Food Mart. Um, so we have that here. And all in favor of approving the liquor license for the London, London Food Mart, uh, signify by saying aye or do, you have questions? We did, yeah, do we have anyone from the police department here? Do we have any issues that we know of for that location? And we do not. Okay. We do not have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on this <coughs> liquor license? All right. All in favor of approving the liquor license for the London Food Mart, say aye. 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 All right. Opposed, same sign. All right. Thank <coughs> you. Okay. And then also, uh, you notice we do have a vacancy in our uh, council clerk position. Yes. Uh, yes, I have that too oh, on the list. Not. Yep, I do have that for the appointments. I have those. Okay, yep, that's coming right up. Uh, so for our council clerk, uh, I have uh, a great candidate here. I met with uh, Mrs. Uh, Erica Watkinson. Uh, and I've distributed her resume. She has a great resume. She's a resident here of the City of London. She is really interested in uh, becoming a part of our local city government. So I was really excited and took a look at her resume and I met with her and she has agreed to uh, accept that position if everyone here agrees to appoint uh, Mrs. Watkinson to the council clerk position. So is there any questions or for Mrs. Watkinson or any questions? Oh. Is, is yes, she and she is here. Did she raise your hand there? Oh, what's up on up? <laughs> <laughs> This is Mrs. Watkinson. Thank you for being here this evening. All right. So just in case we had questions, I wanted you to step up to the microphone. Okay. Um, what interests you in this? Well, I'm a lifelong resident of London. I'm a realtor here in the community. So I have the pleasure of welcoming a lot of the families that are moving here and looking into our city and living here. And having their families involved. So it seemed like a good way to stay involved. Okay. So the technology involved to do this, to do that, and the videos and all of that and the recordings, that doesn't, hopefully that doesn't uh, intimidate you in any way? No, it, it does would not. intimidate me. 
<laughs> Henry's got a down. Yeah, I have. I have. If I can do this, <laughs> I'll and, you. and do you have? Do you have any experience? Not as a council clerk, that's impossible, but maybe a recording secretary of an organization or anything like that? Um, I'm currently the president of the Madison County Area Realty, Realty Association, and I served as the Madison County representative to the Columbus Area Board of Directors. Wow. Mm -hmm. So um, before becoming president, I served as both secretary and vice president for several years and amongst many other organizations <laughs> that I have served in. Okay. Right. Any further questions? <coughs> currently a realtor? Correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's great. Uh, you don't foresee any problems as far as all your other duties that you have inter interfering with this? Uh, as far as the time commitment, I'm assuming. I, I do employ a transaction coordinator slash assistant, so she's happy to fill in when I need her assistance. Okay. Right. And, and I assume that the discussion about not just council meetings, but the committee meetings was that you had that discussion for yes. to to go to committee meetings also. Yes. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor of approving Mrs. Watkinson as the London City Council Clerk, say aye. 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 All right. Opposed, same sign. All right. Thank you. Can you start tonight? <laughs> that would be <laughs> tough. <laughs> Uh, she will begin at the our first meeting in uh, January, which will be January the 5th. So thank you very much. All right. Uh, on to our approval for Ward 3 representative. Um, at this point, the uh, Madison County Republican Central Committee, they have met, uh, and they had the uh, option to appoint someone through their processes, and however, they did not appoint someone to the third ward um, for city council. Uh, since they did not appoint anyone for uh, ward three, those uh, responsibilities fall on council here to appoint someone for that position. Uh, today I had a discussion with the Secretary of State, a representative there, as well as uh, Mr. Eads, and uh, according to uh, their, the ORC, and then this was uh, written by Jennifer Hitt again as well, and she was uh, with, she had the same um, conclusion that we have 30 days from the uh, Republican Central Committee's meetings time that we have to choose a representative for that ward. Uh, so we do have a few more weeks, and I heard that we may have some more interest, so we do have several uh, people still interested in that position. So 30 days from that date will be at our first meeting in January. Uh, so during that time, we'll be meeting with more potential uh, candidates for uh, filling the Ward 3 uh, spot. And we did have Mr. Norman, he was there uh, as the, uh, the single person that applied for that position. Uh, however, now we do have a couple more people that are interested in that. We will be uh, meeting with them as well. So we will not be uh, filling that position at this time, but at our uh, January 5th meeting, we should have a better idea of uh, who will have to fill that position. So thank you for that. Mr. President? Yes. Uh, out of curiosity, are we are, what else are we gonna do to promote this? Uh, are we gonna get an article in the Messenger and or anything on the city website? Yeah, we're gonna make sure to get this posted on the city site as it is a city position. So this needs to be posted on our city site and it does need to I feel it needs to be posted in the Madison Messenger as well to get the word out there uh, that we do have a, a vacancy and a uh, position in our local city government. And, and I assume you'll have a deadline, whether it is that meeting or maybe they can uh, send anything to you before that time or... Right. We'll make sure that uh, we have my email address listed, uh, similar to what we've done for the uh, council clerk position. So that way I can receive resumes at that time uh, and then we will have a chance to meet with them. So I'll get with several of you because uh, that is definitely something that I uh, would like to include uh, council in on to uh, interview uh, possible candidates that we have for the Ward 3 position to uh, complete that term. All right. Any other questions? On no, thank you. All right, thank you. 
and I've received from the mayor a request for uh, the appointments to the boards and commissions. And everyone, have you received a copy of that as well? Uh, for the boards and commissions for the upcoming year, uh, and that's the Metro Housing, uh, Board of Zoning Appeals, Historic uh, Review Board. Well, let's see here, we'll say uh, Angela Eden for Metro Housing, Zayed Siddiqui for Board of Zoning and Appeals, uh, Robert, Robert Bengal uh, for the Historic Review Board, Dave Mars also for the Historic Review Board, Lisa Jackman for the Historic Review Board, Sarah Mars for Parks and Recreation Commission, Dave Mars for Historic Downtown Revitalization Committee, Wayne Roberts for the Historic Downtown Revitalization Committee, Shannon Trainer Historic Downtown Revitalization Committee, and Jackie Call for that same committee, and Tom Cox for the Income Tax Review Board. Uh, so all in favor of a approving those appointments for the boards and commissions, uh, say aye. 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 All right, opposed, same sign. All right, thank you. All right, on to our audience concerns. All right, first we will, let's see here. All right, first, I'd like to uh, begin with Margie Cooper. Hello. Okay. I'm Margie Cooper first. I would like to address the law, but I want to turn on my hearing aid. Don't work in in her right, so it's hard for me to hear anything. I do have a couple concerns and questions that I have to ask the council in our city. I am number one with our safety service director changing his lights, taking out lights. I myself have almost been here three times by cars since his light was changed. Twice up at the courthouse when I had the red light to walk. These cars are flying through, turning right, on red, not stopping. Over on Richmond, I was going out to Kroger's. There is the stop sign. I was actually coming back from Kroger's, was going to cross the street right there and crosswalk. A car come flying up, and I'm not kidding any of you, with my arms on my breast here, if I turned my hand sideways, my hand literally touched that car. That's how close I was to being hit. Three weeks ago, I think it was, when I came up here to the council meeting, when I left to go home, a car come flying around down at the back here where the heart doctor's office gets. Luckily, I got seen him and got out of his way, or I would have been definitely plowed under. Something has got to be done to help the people in this county. I am worried to death about our police, our fire, and our squad. We needed them vitally bad in this county. <coughs> Why do we not have enough money to fund and help them? And has anybody in the last seven years thought about bringing in new businesses to help the taxpayers pay and fund for all this stuff. With the new businesses, but I see all the time, everybody says, do your business here in town. There's nothing in this town for us to do. I'm handicapped, I'm in a wheelchair. I can't get in 90% of these stores. 
McDonald's was just remade. You know what? I can't even open the two doors at McDonald's to get in because, number one, the door's in the wrong place. It smeared right there where drive through is. If a person in the wheelchair opens that door and slides back just a little bit, they go backwards into the road. What are you people thinking about safety for this town? And it's only getting worse by the day. I risk my life every time I come out. Sidewalks, bumps, these wheels in the front of this wheelchair cost me $500 a piece to replace. There are potholes, there are broken sidewalks. 90% of the time I have to ride in the road to keep my trigger from being tore up. When is somebody in this town going to start helping people? I ask all of you this. I have tried and tried to get help. This town is falling apart. It looks like crap. Why? Are people being held responsible in the fire department for supplies that are being used? Or is it being all wasted and carried off and carried home? I know for a fact because I know two different people who, number one, worked for the city of London as ODOT people and clean streets during the snow and whatever. And I know for a fact they carry big five-gallon buckets of salt home. That cost us. Has anybody in here bothered to look and see where the wasting of money truly is. Man, I'm serious, guys. Well, we thank you for your comments. And, you know, you're talking about the uh, intersections there, especially at 2nd uh, and, and Main there. That is, I feel that is a very dangerous intersection. I think the light should be put back there. Uh, even you know, if you have a large truck or a small car or you're walking, you have to get almost all the way in the middle of the street in order to see you know, if a car is coming or not. By the time you're all the way out in the street, yeah, you're at the car, you know, if there is one coming or not. Uh, similar uh, over there when you cross uh, High Street at uh, South Oak with the courthouse, similar there. It's, it's very risky to try and cross the street because those cars, they know there's not a light there and they're just going to fly straight through. Right. There. It makes it almost impossible, especially during the day. You have to wait for so many vehicles to go by before you can even cross, no matter how far away they are because they're going pretty fast. So, you know, I do agree with you that, that something needs to be done with those lights there. Now, I think we've had them out long enough to uh, know, and I think we've heard a lot of complaints that that's definitely something that we should take a look into uh, bringing back. You know, and this is something that the community is asking for. So I think if we listen to the community, then this is something that they would like for their tax money to pay for. So I think that's something you know, we should take a really serious look at. Uh, right. But Langdon has opened up by taking this like an international raceway out right. here. And people are not slowing down. They are not stopping for stop signs. Over on Richmond, going to work Kroger, right. you cannot see it because of the boots and throw you right there by the telephone pole. Cars cannot see you coming. Right. I was in the middle of the road all three times and had the right of way <clears throat> and almost got hit. Yeah. 
Why is that going to stop when somebody gets killed? Anyone else? Yes. You know, we're talking about racists. We're talking about a basketball court. Aren't people's lives more important? What we can do if we don't have any place to come and help us during a wreck or if our house is broken into? Our fire who come and put out our fire. Let learn our eating them kids who pick us up when we are in wrecks or somebody decides to plow us over. What are we going to do without these people? They need help first, and we need water. How long have we had this water problem in this town that I'm constantly charged for? They had to fix the fire hydrant. I didn't bring my water bill up. They charged me $140 for the water. They freaking wasted fixing that fire hydrant. And I can bring you up to be able to show you. All right. Well, I have every one on my water bill. <clears throat> my bills are normally not past $50 or $60. But when they fixed that fire hydrant, I got a water bill for two hundred and forty some dollars. Why? Okay. Well, ma'am, I thank you for, you know, definitely bringing your concerns to us. And I agree too that we need some prioritization here in the city for these uh, major issues that we have right now. You know, we're talking about basketball courts, talking about raises, but we're talking about flooding for you know in people's houses. We're talking about infrastructure you know, that allows other businesses not to even consider coming to our city. You know, and we do have laws on the books and, you know, we need those laws to be uh, enforced. And I'm glad now that we do have a uh, new uh, officer, code enforcer, uh, working for the building and zoning department and he's, he works more hours now. So I do expect to uh, see a change in how the city looks with having someone have more dedicated time to that. Does anyone else have anything they want to it, just a few things I was going to address. There's a lot of a lot there to unpack. Uh, as President Comer just mentioned, the zoning officer is now getting 20 hours a week. I hope that that helps with the sidewalk situation. Honestly, if someone's out there to enforce it, of course, most of that comes on our neighbors. If their sidewalks are bad, they're supposed to fix them. Uh, that they don't. The crossing of the roads. I don't know if you're aware. We did approve four different. Um, solar powered push button pedestrian crossing signs to help get across at High and Oak, mm -hmm. High and Union beside McDonald's, and Main and Second, and Main and Fourth up by the church. Mm -hmm. That's what got approved. That's what the money we had the money for at this point. I hope that helps a little bit, but we can't make people pay attention when they drive, honestly. I mean, I, I'm sure it's dangerous for you every time you go out there. Mm -hmm. And the water bill, have, have you contacted them? Because I agree, that's an awful big I spike. I didn't bring that up with me, but I do have it. Yeah, I, I, I think that they should probably take a look at that. They, hopefully they can help you out on that. Yeah. Thank you. I just Thank feel you. it's ridiculous what this town and what you people are doing to our city. I've never seen London look this bad. I was raised in this town. My mother and my father worked their butts off in this town. And it just keeps getting worse by the day. It looks like crap. You can't walk anywhere without taking a chance of falling if you can walk and not break your neck. It's going to happen. And again, ma'am, thank you very much for your for your comments. I thank you all for your time, but I think you're wrong when you're all talking basketball and races. I think the money needs to go to fix things. Why wasn't that high school fixed? Because 
our wonderful mills get cost too much money. When it costs too much money, if they would have fixed it when it made a fix rather than mm -hmm. wait till it's falling down. When now you want how many millions to tear that down and now build a new building? Right. Yes, our place needs help vitally bad. I am for our law enforcement. I am for our fire and our squad. We need them. They should come first. But London should be trying to bring in new business just to help and start raising money, not a freaking basketball court. This is all I'm going to say. I thank you very much for the time, and I do thank you and appreciate you speaking up so I could hear you. Thank you I very much. I just want for you to know it's very dangerous and took them lights off. And every time I was where the lights were, except for two times. And even when I'm crossing, when I have a light, I look for five different times because cars are flying red, right turn, or not stopping at stop signs. When's it gonna stop? That's all I'm asking. If I get hit, I've already told my family, sue the mayor, sue the state yes, server director. They're the ones that cause this problem. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, we have Anita Likens. Please state your name, address, and you have five minutes, please. Anita Likens. 157 East 1st Street. Gentlemen, I can't follow that. Um, what I believe is that one of the things, as you know, I've been here for the last year. Many times I've been the only person here in the audience. I've been speaking about the Constitution and what our founding fathers have been saying. I've got more, but like I said, I cannot follow that because what we have tonight is Local involvement mm -hmm. means national impact. Our new council clerk mentioned local involvement. Mm -hmm. I would love, not that I always agree with everything I hear, but I would love to see this kind of involvement every city council meeting. Thank you for the time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, next we have Michael Norman. You say your name, address, and you have five minutes. Uh, Michael Norman, uh, 188 South Oak Street in the great city of London, Ohio. Oh, the baby. <laughs> That's right, already talking out. Um, just a couple of things. One, uh, I have a question with the, uh, with the uh, aqua situation. I asked it at the BPU meeting the other day, but I thought, I thought it needed to be re-asked at this, this meeting. Who, who is making the decision or who is in charge of making the decision of if we let Aqua come in and look at these books and, and take the tours and whatnot? Um, is that going to be the BPU that does that and then the BPU reports to council? Because if that is the case, isn't that kind of like self-policing there for them to decide what they feel aqua can and cannot offer us shouldn't we have like a independent committee somewhere that kind of <coughs> the information is brought from the bpu department and the aqua and the committee would be the kind of a neutral instead of the bpu department getting all the information and then giving it to you not that they would ever do anything underhanded 
but it does give the opportunity for maybe some information to get lost or whatnot. I just don't think that's a good situation that we have the BPU deciding if we move forward with aqua or not. I think that should be done somewhere else. So that was my first question. And then uh, the second question is very kind of similar in the fact that with the, the raise request that's going through, I think it's kind of like the same situation. You, you're the elected official and you're deciding whether you get a raise or not. Um, isn't there also a way to put a citizen committee together that would review just the elected official raises and you would, the administration or whoever comes forth would come through that committee and then they would talk and then they would bring their decision to council to go for. So those are my two questions. And then lastly, I just wanna wish all of you a, a happy holiday and uh, you know we're going into another new year and uh, you're a great bunch of guys and ladies, ladies. But I'm going to call you guys. But um, and, and, uh, I just I just want to make sure that you know we we go back and forth a lot. But when it comes down to it, we're all citizens of London, and that you know I hope that you and your families have a nice holiday season and that you stay safe. All right, okay. thank you. And, and to answer your uh, question with the uh, pay raises, those uh, pay raises would go into effect with the next. I guess administration in, in charge there. So it wouldn't necessarily go into effect for us that are, we that are here now. Right. This is gonna be after the next election and that happens every, you know, four years for that. So. It'd be 2024. So it, 20, yeah. So it's a possibility that the people that are in those positions now will not be in those positions at that time. Uh, so that pay raise, if it is uh, accepted would, uh, affect the new people in those positions. So, yeah, so it doesn't, uh, yeah, pay raise definitely would not go with a person, it goes with a title. So, you wanna. All right. And, and then, uh, if, as far as uh, the Aqua, I would imagine, and I know, Rich, you were at that BPU me meeting, but I would imagine this would need to go with the safety service director. Um, and as, it, so you would not speak with Aqua, you wouldn't talk to them about possibly coming into the city to uh, take over our... Uh, My work. understanding would be, and it is in the hands of the BPU, uh -huh. they will review, they'll make a recommendation, and then it'll pass it to the council. They're mm -hmm. not gonna make the ultimate decision. Council's the one that makes the decision for the city. Mm -hmm. So they will make their recommendations and then they will pass their findings through Rich to present to you guys. And it would not, it, that doesn't fall under and okay, and Rich, do you have anything to? I know that. Because uh, you were there. I've got some notes. I know that this <coughs> was sent to the law director, and if I can find my notes there, the law director has it right now, and we'll be hearing from her next, and then uh, we'll move forward from there. Okay, and I think that is a good idea to have another, uh, you know, maybe put together a committee to, to hear this, you know, because it's going to be a huge change. And, and I understand your position in that because uh, it, it kind of is an interesting position that BPU would be in if Aqua came. Uh, so, you know, I really, I understand right. so where I, you're coming from. I don't see from. The, the upside for BPU to come and say, oh, this is a good idea. Because right. that means, you know, I think it's, it's definitely somewhere in there. It's got to be some kind of conflict of interest for the BPU to be looking at the people that might be buying them out. Right, and I, I understand where you're coming from too, but then also I do remember that in uh, when they came to speak, they did say that you can uh, kind of tailor the right. agreement to keep them aboard too, and as well as other city employees, so that, you know, I know that contract can be tailored uh, where that would not happen. So, but I under yeah, I understand where you're coming from there. All right, well, thank you, and like I said, have a nice holiday. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, next we have Tommy Boyd. Tommy Boyd, 48 North Union Street, London, Ohio. Uh, first off, thank you tons for coming in and giving your voice on that one. That's something I've been bringing up for the last year and a half up here. 
trying to figure out whose job it is to help make this city handicap accessible. So it's nice that somebody that mm. I'm actually trying to speak for has come up to say their piece also. But my uh, first piece was about the grant for tearing down the middle school. I feel it's something we'd be able to find again in the future. Do I have that right? Or is that like one of a time, one of a kind type grants? Well, first of all, you're never guaranteed a grant. Um, we felt like we were very fortunate that we were given this particular grant. Uh, it all depends on how much state funding is available, whether or not they decide to offer that type of demolition grant. Um, they offered it this year. Um, I've not necessarily known of any in the past since I've been in this position two years, so I, I really don't know uh, how often they do that. Okay. Um, so, you know, as you know that we we apply for many grants and we sometimes we get them and sometimes we don't. So we were fortunate enough to get them. There wasn't that many that applied. Matter of fact, there were zero uh, communities that applied in Madison County except for us. So that was why we was awarded. The, the county only got a half a million dollars and we was able to get all of it. If multiples had applied, it would have been less. Okay. So. We might be able to get it again if other communities apply and it's a half a million dollars, we might only get 100,000 or 250,000. Just depends on how many apply and what the needs are. Gotcha. Um, all right, and so what I kind of wrote down was fire department is what I was gonna be talking about. And as it sounds at the moment, we really don't have any plan for if this levy fails. I do believe that she talked about that. Mm -hmm. That will have Safety just meeting. cuts and there'll be some tough choices, decisions to be made. You know, that kind of says that we don't really have a option for that. And so that's where I was wondering if that grant is possible again in the future, would we be able to use our current recreation center at least one more year? Just in May, we have one, two other people that are gonna be running for the same seat as you, Pat. And that's where it's just kind of a, is starting this or even trying to get that hole dug, get the sidewalks done and everything else by May possible. And if you know there is a switch at that point in time, how will you progress with that? Are you still willing to kind of pursue it? But at the same time, it's not really a personal question. I'm trying to get to it for you. It's just more of a thought for us going into that decision on if we should start. And so I was just gonna say, hopefully we could maybe hold it off Use that recreation center one more year and go from there. Some more on that. Now, just to uh, answer that, that's kind of exactly where my thoughts are on that. I know that that community center has been there for a number of years and it's been neglected. I don't see why there's any reason why we can't put money into it to keep it for another year or two uh, while we take the time to design a community center exactly the way that the community wants it, put that on the ballot by itself. Uh, so that way the community will have a chance to vote on it. Right now, like you've uh, mentioned, that grant money that we have, it's kind of has us under the gun, like, oh, you have to do it or you're going to yeah. lose it. But, you know, we don't have to be tied to the deadline of that grant money. Might be okay uh, to pass on. Another grant may come up in the future, maybe not the same one, uh, or we may decide to go another way. The, the community yes. may decide that they want the community center with a swimming pool, with everything that they want, because not all the kids in the community uh, play basketball. Not all the kids in the community play volleyball. Some kids may do better swimming. They may do better Walk running party. those Walk out party. for parties or something like that. But, uh, you know, I would think that we could possibly uh, renovate the current gymnasium, make sure the hallways are safe and blocked off so kids can't run down the halls, things like that. And I know that uh, if there's rocks or something falling off the building, I've seen where they put netting on the outside of the building to keep it secure so that doesn't happen until you're able to, you know, go a little bit further with fixing that. But, As we see the Methodist yeah, Church, you know. And I would think done. that the current community center wouldn't have to be held under the deadline of that grant money, uh, you know, so it's a tear it down or don't tear it down. It, it would be a leave it up. Let's keep it up for another couple years. Let's get the correct levy put out there to the people, let them vote on it, and then see where we go from there. That's what I think. 
Can I, can I ask, so what happens when we start pulling permits over there and realize that it gets condemned and we didn't take it down when we should have, or worst case possibility, child gets hurt over there. Plaster is falling from the walls. It is being cleaned up daily. So got to think about that. What about 100,000 is kind of what my projection is it's on just at least getting it manageable for a year. I'm not saying it's going to be it wouldn't a cheap touch it. patch up. But you're going to have to pull permits at that point but, to do anything to that building. All right. So, and so I mean, yeah, there's going to be some tedious steps. But, I mean, last November I was bringing that same thing up, you know, recommending bleachers that actually fold out that would have enough seating space up on that stage forever. <sighs> and so kind of been on the same thing. But, yeah, we're finally at that point of, hey, what's going on and so that's all for me tonight all right thank you, thank you. any questions for yes a couple things um, we have a safety hazard in the old school not necessarily the, totally in the gym but the old school it, it is continually to continuing to fall down bricks are falling off that's one of our concerns is at what point if it falls completely over is if there's kids that go out there in the springtime that are out there playing football in that front lawn there along First Street. You know, God forbid if they got close to close enough to it, that building is leaning that direction, it falls over and hurts somebody. That's our concern is to get that cleaned up. Secondly, when we had the building inspected, remember when that first happened, we got a structural engineer come in and look at it, and he basically said, you know, you're probably okay to go ahead and have have programs in there, but if you do start renovating this, he goes, you've got to bring it up to code. We've got to put it, he's, he said, our electrical system is not up to code. It has to be redone. It probably because of us having a concession stand in there and the amount of people we have in the actual building at all times, we'll have to have a sprinkler system put in. So $100,000 multiplied by 10 or more, then you can probably get that building up to code. I would rather spend a little bit more and get a brand new building that you don't have to worry about as opposed to putting a, a million, million five into something that's 60 years old. So that was where we're coming from on the, the gym itself and the old school. All right, and like I said, where I'm coming from on that is making sure that we're presenting something that uh, is worthy of the city of London, uh, you know, a pole barn with two basketball hoops is what I'm hearing, and I don't know, you know, how many people are. Yeah, and I'm talking about what would be in place if the demolition. They can't hear you. Yeah, they can't hear you. Yeah, they can't hear you. All right. All right. Next, we have Dave Kell. You state your name, address, and you have five minutes, please. For letting me speak, um, I'm economic development director for the county, also uh, executive director of the Madison County Community Improvement Corporation, uh, Madison County Port Authority, as well as Madison County um, Land Bank that's newly formed and will meet starting next year and work at the <coughs> courthouse, 1 North Main Street. Um, I'm at, here today uh, to talk briefly um, as a, the discussion has been um, had about the recreation center, the community center. Um, there has been dialogue over the past couple of meetings, I believe, about the community improvement corporation working with the city on that particular project. Um, I'm here to answer any questions you may have on that. Um, ultimately, the goal with using the CIC is it does speed up uh, the process because if you work through the CIC, you don't, do not have to go through the public bidding process. Um, so there's a, a time saving with that perspective and, and with builders oftentimes time equals money. And then also um, when it comes to a cost, uh, because you're working with a not-for-profit 501c3 development organization, um, you ultimately have a chance to save 25 to 33% of a project cost based on savings on um, not dealing with prevailing wage as well as sales tax on materials for, for the building. So, um, you know, we have worked on projects here locally. If you look, obviously, at the fairgrounds, um, you know, three of the buildings there we used, we worked with the, the fairgrounds on those buildings, um, and they were constructed, um, you know, obviously well used, well done. Um, 
you know, we went through state audits with all those projects and everything went, came out clear. Drive out through Summerford Township, they're, they're uh, building out there. Uh, we worked on the expansion with them. So again, clean audit, everything went well there. So um, I'm here just to, again, answer questions, let you know that the CIC is willing to partner if the C chooses to use that organization. Um, <coughs> and then yes, the grant money um, obviously comes into play. It came through the county and uh, working with the city. Um, ultimately, um, as uh, <coughs> Castle mentioned, that, that those dollars, um, 500,000 were, were, were to the county. Um, you know, I was thinking back, the last time I saw demo money like this come out, it was more in the Obama administration. Uh, so I would think about how much time that's been. And that was just to tear down structures uh, in the community, both residential or commercial. So, um, you know, I just have to say, as the gentleman just mentioned, there won't be more money. I don't know, because a lot of money came out through ARPA, obviously. Um, but just looking back on my, you know, 14, 15 years of what I've been doing, and I was over in Greene County at the time, you know, that's the last time money came in like this for demoing of buildings like that. So, um, ultimately, again, I'm just here to say CIC is willing to partner. If the city is going to partner, I receive no personal benefit if the city does move forward with the project or not, my pay paycheck's gonna be the same regardless. So I wanna make sure that's not any type of thing on why I'm here talking. It's just that I know there's been dialogue about that. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes, Chris. If we would approve this and you do build it, what kind of a savings going through CIC would we experience as opposed to yeah, well, and I think I, I, I have some preliminary numbers, um, you know, for the project, but again, I, it goes back to, we, we saved about 30% on each fairgrounds building. Um, you know, working, we worked with Golden Giant, they're out of Kenton, Ohio, um, on that. Uh, so, um, again, and the main savings come from um, working with the CIC, not having to do prevailing wage as well as the, the sales tax on the materials <coughs> because it's going through the CIC that is um, foregone and, and not realized. Do you have any idea what kind of savings is involved in um, not having to participate in prevailing wage? Um, I, that's that's probably half of that 30%, I would say. And then you got the building materials as well. Um, so, yeah. It's Pretty good chunk. I don't know exact dollars amount. I can't give you right now at this moment, but we'd have to run the numbers based on what right now we have what we would use the CIC. I don't, you know, I could talk to contractors, see what that would be without it, but yeah. Now, one of the things that I'm hearing and seeing, uh, you know, from the community as far as the CIC involvement is that this is basically a way to circumvent having a levy where people can actually vote if they want to have the, uh, to that community center built or not? Uh, that's not what I've heard. I mean, if you're well, hearing that, that's different different circles than I hang out with. Well, but that is what I'm hearing, though. So it, you may not be hearing it, but this is what I'm hearing. Okay. I'm hearing that it would be a way to, because uh, the of course the community center, it's already been uh, brought to levy. It's already been brought down because it was attached to so many other things. Uh, who's to say it was the levy that brought it down or the police or the fire, but it was all brought down um, and it's, it's being viewed as a way to uh, still give the community, you know, what they may not have voted for. I, I have, I'm, my, again, I receive no personal benefit, so I'm just bringing a tool that's been right. used, that's all. That, all right. So, and I mean, yeah, I've not heard that, but I'm not saying that's not true. So yeah, it, sure. it is out there. That okay. is one of the thoughts on this project. Okay. Mr. Eads? Uh, well, I thought Mr. Kell was going to be here to actually speak on 27 and you're staying to stay you're staying for that piece of legislation or are you do you intend to leave after this part um i mean i was hoping to take questions i didn't you know however you guys run the meeting i'm I, you know if you want to ask more questions i'm again using as a being here as a resource so well i i'm uh, mr mr president did you intend to have him speak 
as the, on that piece of legislation. Is that why he was here? R right. Be uh, I think he was invited by the mayor. Right. Um, but so, when we do speak on 217, it would be good if he were here to answer questions that may come up during that legislation. Yeah. Yeah. 217 is the bond. Okay, then 216. I'm yeah, sorry. and that's why, Greg, I know you asked if he would be able to be present for <clears throat> Um, and, and come do. and speak, and that's what he's doing here. So that's why. So he's going to do that during the. Well, what question? Do you have questions about two seven? Or there, there, there may be more questions that come up that we don't have at this time during the presentation of legislation two sixteen. Did you have any questions now, or do you want to wait till the? Well, I would prefer to wait because okay. I thought that was more right. appropriately done at that Correct. time. All right. If Mr. Kell is going to stay, if he's not going to stay, then. Then I'll start to ask questions. That's I mean, that's up to you. It's your meeting, Mr. President. Yeah, because I know when legislation is brought, there are more questions that may come up that we can't, we may not have at this time. Uh, so I, you know, I would ask that he would stay for that legislation since that would directly affect yourself. Is that coming? I got to pick up my kids, so I know that okay. that's coming up soon. All right. Um, well, that's going to be a while. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I would think so. Um, should we ask the questions now? Go ahead and to, ask. To I would give, say ask your. To question. give Mr. Kell the opportunity to go get his child. So I understand. Uh, okay. Thanks for clearing that up. Sure. So I am glad that you're here. I think Madison County Futures had to be here because your name is on the project. Right. Um, I've had people that have asked me the question that I hadn't even considered, and that is, yes, I believe. You're compensated somehow by Madison County Futures, and you should be. You're the executive director. That's not true. That's not I'm true. I'm a county employee. Okay, so are any of your board members compensated in any true. way? Okay, Th that's good. I that didn't even think of that myself, but that was brought up. So you talk about the fact that this uh, the county buildings were done, yes. right? How many how many buildings at the county were done? Three center grounds, and then some for township buildings. Okay. And, and we went through, you went through this same process with all of them. Correct. Okay. And your experience in that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm asking, how was your experience in that? Went uh, fairly well. I mean, you know, you're dealing with the contractor. Um, you work with them on a day to day, day, day basis. Um, you know, they basically provide the invoices that need to be paid. We work with, so in this case, we work with the city. The city would be that entity that would kind of guide the project, but we'd be in front of it uh, interacting with the contractor. So we'd be, we'd, the city would relay information to us, we'd work with the contractor, get everything to what the city wants, um, you know, make payments through the CIC to the contractor, and then at the end there's a punch list that needs to get looked at, and then, you know, everything's closed out, and we go through the audit at the end of the year. Okay. so. You're, you're bringing up another question that I actually hadn't thought of yet, and that is you're controlling the payments. Correct. To the, but you're not controlling the money because that's coming from us. Correct. Right? So you're controlling the, the, the money that we have to issue the bond on in order to have that money, but then you control the payments. We would be a partner. That. We would be a partner, yes. Okay. <coughs> um, so it was mentioned at the last council meeting by Mr. Castle that the contractor or the, the builder that was being considered was um, uh, well recommended, was recommended because he could do his work on time and within budget, uh, but not one point in anywhere in that document. Has anyone actually seen the document, the, the London proposed London City Courts? Has anyone actually seen that document? In the, in the audience, I'm asking because, because you're coming to us to talk to us about this, and that document's not where you've been able to see it. It hasn't been posted on the city website. It hasn't been put out publicly that you can see it. I have a copy. Council members have a copy. But I'm asking if you guys have had a chance to see it. Because if not, I don't know how we make this decision if you guys haven't had a chance to see it. But your name's on that, and nowhere in that document does it say who the builder is. It does say it's a butler building. Okay. Okay. Do we know who the builder is? 
There's been discussions about who the particular builder is, but at this point in time, we have not engaged a particular builder. Uh, well, so I didn't get that impression last time, but I did look up Butler Building, okay. and the only and they said it was in Madison County. So the only person company in Madison County is J Car Construction. Okay. I don't know why that's not in the document, if that was the intent. I think they're waiting. I think, and, and Mayor, feel free. I, but I believe it's it's since it's still in discussion at this point in time, we haven't signed any documents with any individuals from so, any any builder. So so J Car. Or Butler building itself may not be a valid discussion at this point if for some reason they turn that down and are we can are we stuck on a Butler building which really is just a brand right I mean a Butler building is a brand just like they have sure. uh, Morton buildings and other Correct. type of buildings. yeah different contractors are Butler builders there's Brentwood builders out of Cedarville for instance you mentioned Jay Carr there's others as well oh okay yeah the only other one I've seen was like in Mason Ohio um, so, so you're here to discuss part of this as the lease. Tell me how the how a lease works, because I'm so, I'm really confused by the yep. term. So in, in basically, this. what would happen is we the attorneys would get together. In this case, it would be uh, the county prosecutor and the city attorney uh, would draw up a write up a lease lease the purchase agreement. So we write write a lease agreement, <coughs> agree on the time frame of the lease. So at that point in time, we would be, in a sense, in a sense, in control of that property for that term, which would be the term of the project. Then once the project is over, upon the agreed upon date, there would be a lease back agreement, if you will, or at least a purchase. So we would buy us out of that lease, and then the county, the city in this case, would be then the owner of the property, if you will. <coughs> so we're the owner of the property now, but we're going to lease it to you for. Essentially, $1, no, a, a, nominal, no. a nominal number, yeah. so that the CIC can facilitate this with the builder and with our money to pay for that to build this pole barn that we're going to pay black basketball in. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Again, we're bringing the opportunity to bring savings to the project through working with the CIC. Okay. And then I, I made the comment at the last meeting how we circumvent the system by not having a bidding process. And the, the, the big thing was for the speed of this and also for the savings of this, and unless I'm wrong, when you talk about prevailing wages, you're talking about union contracts. So we're, we're avoiding paying unions to do the work because it's cheaper to not do that and going through the CIC or Madison County Futures as a private entity, you can hire who you want. Correct, yes. Same as the Port Authority is the same way. Port Authority is basically a community improvement cor corporation on steroids. Um, much more power, um, but the CIC in this case can do that, yes. Okay. I, I, I mean, I thought that's literally how that was working. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't wrong about that. Uh, the only other question that I had really had nothing to do with too much on that was... Uh, because you've answered my questions, I appreciate that, especially sure. about the ones at the fairgrounds. Um, the lease, I understand it a little bit better now. And the only thing was that I seen, which I brought up, was it about naming the city as an additional insured because you, or the CIC, the Madison County Futures, is required to have some type of commercial insurance Correct. as a builder's risk policy. Yeah, we worked with Don Herman on that. Okay. Yep. And, and would name the city of London as an additional insured, or does that just have to work with yeah we'd have to work on the particulars of that and i have to go back that the last fairground building was i think back in 15 or 16 so i mean it's okay. were you were you with the cic because um, they mentioned that the city of london had worked with the cic once before and that was when the what is now the comer building the old armory sold were you involved with that uh, i don't know if it's did it sell henry or did it, is it a like a long-term lease and then a buying option at the end uh it was a uh Lane contract. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we were involved in that basically. Um, you know, again, uh, Mr. Hume was there at the time. Um, I'm not sure what happened with uh, Mr. Eads and Mr. Hume at the time, but we were engaged early on, but then we were kept an arm's length away. So, um, you know, I know they named us, named us the agent for the sale of the property, but after that, we were not engaged. I, 
separate meal. Okay. I just, I didn't, I wasn't aware that we had been involved with the CIC yeah, as the city at all. 13, or late, mid-14, I believe it was. 2014. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, but thank, I appreciate your coming today. No, no I, really, I really do, because this is like a whole different way to do business. And um, and I know the CIC exists or the Madison County Futures, but it's always confusing because people have asked me many years, even when I did the radio show, when I talked to you, right. how does that work? And yeah. it's still a little muddy. Look, if you guys want some, if you guys can't fall asleep, 17.4 New Hire Guys Code, it's all right there. Trust me, I fall asleep many times reading that stuff. So it's not fun, but it's, it's an ORC. So okay. it's a tool to use. I'm, that's all, I'm done. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. No, um, Anyone? Yes. <coughs> Dave? The contractors slash staff or, you know, specialties, how many people do you think would be on that project you know, on payroll? I don't, I, I mean, don't just, know. But, I, I mean, I'm, but there'll be a number of people on payroll, and those income taxes, you know, people working on that, you know, yeah. that, those income taxes stay here in the city. Sure, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that comes into play, too. So that's a positive for the city. Correct. I mean, yeah. Have a ballpark figure about how many? How many people? I I don't off the top of my head. Okay. I wish I did, but I don't off the top of my head. All right. Anyone else? Anything further? All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate you guys being here. Take care, Dave. All right. Next on to uh, Stephen Miller. <clears throat> Please state your name, address, and you have five minutes, please. Thank you. That's uh, Stephen Miller, 225 Jenkinson, in uh, Ward 3. And uh, I just had, actually, uh, I'd like to, before I get started, thank Mr. Long and the Parks Department. They planted some trees. Uh, technically, it's on city property, but uh, plan to annex that property eventually when they're taking care of it. But anyway. But uh, if they put it right along with the, uh, the edge of the property where I was going to plant some trees, and instead of throwing those trees away, because they evidently there was some type of issue where they were previously planted, they planted those trees uh, right where they should be. So I just want to say thank you. And uh, I think it was, I don't know who made that decision, but whoever made that decision, thank you very much. Let's try to, try to be positive whenever we can here. And... Uh, I, I just have a question for the process of the uh, representative for Ward 3. And is, is it the city council's decision on who they're going to appoint, or is it still the Republican Party? Um, at this point, since the, uh, <coughs> the way the process works is if there's a vacancy, the Republican Central Committee, they have uh, an obligation to appoint someone for that position if they uh, – find a candidate that they would like to choose and they have 40 up to 45 days from the vacation of that position if they do not uh, make an appointment then the uh, obligation falls on city council and we have 30 days from that point to uh, find a uh, someone to fill that position and if we do not within those 30 days uh, then the obligation would fall on the mayor to uh, appoint someone or choose someone for that position so since the Republican Central Committee uh, did not appoint at that time, so it's our uh, uh, obligation now to go through that process for the next uh, for 30 days, which ends on January 5th meeting. Okay. And then when? And I just one more question on that. When is the um, is that the election for that position? Obviously, the the person who is appointed would then. That position would be up for the next election, right? In that position, they wouldn't be like appointed for. I think it's a four-year. You guys? No, two it's year? a two-year. The two-year. Two the two-year term, but this will be the second year of that term. Right. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so then that, so in November, basically next November, they would be up for re-election or up for election. Up for election. That mm -hmm. position Correct. would be. Well, or is it in May? Well, you. It, for the primary. Yeah. He would have to if, fill if, out if you're going if you're going to put in for, if someone's going to put in for the primary they're going to have to do it by February first. February first is the deadline for the primary. And if they're going to go as a partisan position, mm -hmm. if they choose to run as an independent, the deadline's the day before the primary. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So and then the, the the final election will be in November, and whoever's elected at that time then serves starting January one. Okay. 
Okay. Well, thank you, and I, I appreciate that. And uh, I can, I think I'll just leave it there. So thank you. Yeah. And you're Ward 3, correct? I am Ward 3. Are you showing interest? No. no <laughs> That's I, just. I, 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 I'm sure. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that it was clear whose responsibility it is right now. Yep. And so the Republican Party, I guess it was from the time, when did that 45-day period start? Uh, 11, 11 uh, 18 was his last, uh, or 17 was his last uh, meeting. meeting. Okay. So then 30 days from that point. Uh, it, it would be well uh, for up to 45 days after that Republican Central Committee, right. but they had a meeting before the 45 days ended. So now we have 30 days from that meeting. From yeah. that meeting, so correct. They, they've so, already said we're not. Yes. Satisfied. So we had 30 yeah, days right. from it was their meeting was the sixth. 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 Right. Sixth. So we have okay, 30 right. days from that, and, which puts our meeting on the fifth. And okay. so there, there is a little bit of one, one correction. Um, city Council does not have an obligation to name a Republican to this seat. Right. Yeah, right. Be because the Republican Party failed to fill that seat at that point, city council does not have to fill it with a Republican, even though a Republican held the seat. Okay, so anybody, you know, an independent or a Democrat or yep. libertarian could libertarian. be appointed. Yeah. Out okay. of the third. I'm sorry? Out of the third, out of out the third, third. ward. Okay. For that, out of the so. third ward, yes. Mm -hmm. has to be correct. a third ward person. And you're a third ward, correct? I am third ward. Yeah. Just checking. Yeah. But I do not have time. To do. I, right. There's a reason why it's a representative system. I do not have right. time. I, I'm sorry. But I do know somebody that does. And okay. I, I think you, you guys know who I'm talking about. He's a guy that's been consistently coming to meetings. He's a guy that's been consistently having good ideas. Michael Norman, that's right. And I would... I would He's a guy who created a website for London to, to clarify things for us. He's a guy that, that I can go to and say, hey, what's it like, you know, what, what's this law? And he says, oh, well, I'll help you look up this, this ordinance, that kind of thing. He's a guy who, I, I've, I've, he's been acting as a representative in, in somewhat of a capacity for me on what is happening in, in the city council. And I, I can tell you that um, if you're looking to, Anthony and I, we disagree quite a bit, but if you're looking for somebody who is going to work as hard as Anthony, because he worked hard, there's no question about it. We disagree on many things, but you can see he's not here to talk about the water, and it's not what, you know, there's a lot of questions about water, that kind of stuff. But I can tell you that if you want somebody who's going to work that hard, you know, I, he didn't solicit me to, to come talk for him. But I am talking for him. And that's who I would choose. If he's going to run in for the position in November, I would be voting for him. I know my wife would be voting for him. We are people who live in Ward 3. And I can tell you, I, I would endorse him. And th that's who I would want. So thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, we have Andrea Dillian. Mr. Comer, I have something to share. Can I bring it up, or do you want to send somebody down? I don't. Okay. Yeah. I was going to see how to grab it. Pat, there's one for you guys and one for everybody else. Uh huh. My name is Andrea Dillion. Sure. I live at 66 East Fifth Street, London, Ohio. Um, I come before you tonight with what I'm giving you now is. Um, I thought it was easier rather than getting everyone to write a letter. I just wrote a brief uh, synopsis of what I come up here for and went around town and asked people to sign it if they agreed. And if they didn't want to, to assign it, they didn't have to. I went throughout the entire city, so it's a good <coughs> cross-reference of people. Um, I have more people here tonight that didn't sign it. I ran out of time. I've been doing this the last three days. Last week I had the flu, or I would have done it all last week. Um, I think I probably, there's about 48 signatures on there. I think I probably could have had 100 if I had enough time. I have a phone there full of more names and more people that wanted to sign it, but I just didn't have the time. I do have a full-time job and a family, and um, you know I'm doing this on my own time. 
They all provided their addresses. A lot of them gave their phone numbers. Some of them didn't want to. That's okay. Um, but there's people here tonight that aren't on that list, and I think they want to be heard. I also attached at the back of the third page, there's a letter, which I'd like to read before I speak, from Ann Beathard, who is a resident here in London. She is an RN. She works evenings. She couldn't attend, but she forwarded me her email and asked me to read it. So I'd like to do that. City Council members, I am unable to attend tonight's meeting, so I am sending an email to be delivered by Andrea Dillian. I do not feel the issues currently facing the City of London are being handled correctly by the council and mayor. We have pressing infrastructure needs in our city now as well as monetary issues for our safety services. I will go on record as I was opposed to leaving the Madison County EMS. Regardless, we now need money to run our city EMS fire department. It occurs to me that this is not the first time our fire department has been in this situation. I am wondering if a complete and intensive audit of the department has been, has been completed to assure the department is being run as efficiently as possible. Our current police facility is an embarrassment to our city. I also am concerned about the quality of our water supply. There does not appear to be any consistency to our water quality. I can sometimes brew iced tea and it is fine, and other times it is, is, it is as thick as sledge. The color of our water is sometimes clear and sometimes brown. The smell of the water varies from day to day. We have also sunk a very large sum into the East High, water, East High Street water tower project, which is still not operable, of some which would have gone a long way to help with other needs. I have six grandsons who are actively involved in youth sports. Two of the boys are currently playing basketball in my old high school, which definitely is a very old and possibly not safe building, so I acknowledge the need for a new facility. I acknowledge that it will take levies to work on our issues. I would like to see the levies put on the ballot as separate issues and let the citizens of London decide by their vote the order in which we tackle these issues. I would also be more likely to vote in favor of a levy if they were not permanent levies. The current administration and council have not proven to the citizens of London that they are good enough stewards of our money to be granted permanent levies. I also am appalled that 12% raises would even be a conversation at this time. I acknowledge that yearly cost of living raises are necessary, but 12% is outrageous. I received a cost of living raise of 3% this year. Let's talk about more reasonable numbers. You as our city council have a chance to prove that you can be good stewards of our city and can represent what the citizens want. That's Ann Beathard. She's got her address on there. Oh, this thing is... First thing I want to say tonight is I am 100% in favor of a rec center for the community of London. What a wonderful asset it would be for every citizen here. As a realtor, of course, having a beautiful rec center that has tons of amenities, such as a, a track to walk, a pool, exercise equipment, yoga classes, aerobics, and a gymnasium would make London much more attractive to potential buyers and make my job easier. It would also offer the city a new income stream as it would attract all age brackets and a fee could be charged for its use from both city res residents and those who reside outside of city limits. But the, the proposal before council tonight offers, offers little more than a place for kids to play basketball and volleyball at a cost of $3 million at 45 to 5% interest or an, or an additional $208,000 a year for 26 to 30 years. The bond interest rate and payment I am quoting came directly from Michael Burns, director of the Robert W. Baird and Company, the city's bond company. Did anybody on council think to call and get what the rates were going to be? Or was he, they, he's not guaranteeing those are the rates. I just wondered, did anybody pick up the phone? It is still my opinion that the city has many larger, more urgent needs at this time that should be a priority. <coughs> Storm sewer systems throughout London, not just in a pocket of town, but throughout the entire city, are antiquated and failing. The mayor speaks of growth, and I am all for it. But the Pulte project on the Heath, Heath land is stalled due to infrastructure issues. The administration says it's because of EPA regulations. But I have contacts at Pulte, and although they will not write an email or want to go on record, it goes much deeper than that. We have been told the cost to replace the storm sewer system is in the tens of millions. Seems to me they should take precedence over a new gymnasium. We also have the long-suffering East High Water Tower project that is still inoperable. I know the administration says there is a fix in the works, but that too is going to be very costly. This too should take precedence. 
We also have a fire department that will be out of money come early next year. I know the plan is to put a levy on the ballot, but there is no guarantee it will pass. If it doesn't, what is council's plan? The, the, police, the police department in London is in desperate need of new facilities. This will cost many millions of dollars and is very deserving for them. But how much more can the citizens of London be asked to finance? We are in a recession. Inflation is at the highest in 15 years. People <coughs> are getting laid off work and 2023 <coughs> isn't looking much better. The fire and police definitely should take precedence. We were told by the administration that area businesses were going to be asked to foot a, push and foot a portion of the cost for a new rec center. Hasn't happened. Has anyone from council or the administration asked Mr. Wolverton, the athletic director at London Schools, about using the three gymnasiums at the elementary, middle, and high school? Just a minute, Pat. How about calling St. Pat's? What about sharing gym time with the Vineyard Church off 38? They have basketball leagues being played there. I found this out with a single phone call. They are willing to do that. I spoke with the, the gentleman there and he said nobody's contacted him. Why can't we use any of these facilities for the immediate future until we can resolve some of the more impre important pressing matters? Also, it troubles me that the metal building for the new gym is not being bid out for best price. London has a lot of issues to attend to. What is being presented and voted on tonight is not a rec center. It is a gymnasium at a cost much too high, considering the more immediate needs. And I've been coming before council and before Pat, long before we were here. You know I was coming when you were at the old about the storm sewers and the infrastructures. And I'm not pinning it all on you. This is not me against Pat Closser. It is personal for me because I work and live here and I have to bring people in and when they fill out, when I go to do a listing and they have to write on their residential property disclosure, which is required by the state of Ohio, that every time it rains heavily, their basement floods, it costs them a sale. I can promise you that. Thank you and Merry Christmas. Thank you. All right, to um, address some of the issues that she brought forward, you know, I do agree that we need a prioritization in the city, most definitely. Our infrastructure uh, is very important. Our fire EMS is very important. Our police is very important. I've said this from the beginning that uh, all of those levies should have been ran separately. Uh, I think if they had been ran separately so that the community would have a chance to vote exactly what they want, I feel confident that we'd be breaking ground on a uh, police station uh, at this point at least. Uh, and, and we may be looking at a different uh, way with our uh, community center and, and fire and EMS. Uh, that fire EMS, that's, uh, that has continued to be a huge issue. I was the lone council person at the time that was not in favor of the uh, EMS EMD split uh, because the largest issue at that time was that we were not going to be able to fund that. Uh, we were not going to be able to fund our own fire EMS within our own city. Now, three years later, it's been proven because there was not a plan in place uh, from the administration to make sure that that happened. It was hopes and dreams, but no concrete uh, plans in place. Uh, just like we're hearing now, there, I, don't, I haven't heard any solid concrete plans uh, if it fails the levy this time, too. The only thing I've heard is uh, there's going to be some layoffs and cutbacks and we'll possibly lose uh, this location that we have across the tracks. Uh, which was part of the reason they wanted to split in the first place. So it's a possibility that we could even lose this whole location and all the people that are working at it if we have to make cuts uh, because the levy doesn't pass again. Uh, I think that, you know, we need to prioritize and we need to, first of all, we need to make sure that we are listening to the community. I think if we listen to the community, taking that issue to the ballot like it was promised initially, uh, I think that we would have come to the de decision that we didn't want to split from the county EMD. I think that that would have been the sentiment of the community at that time. And I think it was, and uh, you know, I think it was unfair that it was taken and, and it was voted on in council instead to happen. And then uh, they were offered that 0.5% uh, tax break uh, as kind of a dangled carrot to sweeten the deal and make it even better. And then later that was taken away. So. It just seems to me like that issue is it hasn't gone away and it's something I don't think is going to go away, but we're going to need to uh, come up with a, something to 
to make sure that we address that. Is there anyone else who wants to comment on any of Mrs. Uh, Dillian's uh, presentation? All right. Thank you. At this, uh, let's see here, I don't think we have any more audience concerns, but I definitely appreciate you bringing your comments. And you Okay, if you just come to uh, the podium, state your name, address, and now let's see here, All right in here. Yeah, I have a spot here. And My name's name? Melody Earls, okay. 71 Laurel Street, London. There's a lot of people in my generation here in London, quite a few of them lower income folks, in case you didn't realize that. A lot of them do not have a computer. If they had one, they wouldn't know how to use it. I have gotten several comments from some of my friends. Why isn't there anything in the messenger anymore about the, the, the meetings? They don't know what's going on. The aqua water thing, they had no idea what I was talking about. So why isn't this being publicized in the messenger like it used to be? The messenger, unfortunately, we don't control them. I wish mm -hmm. that they would post more of what we do uh, here in our council meeting. They do post several other communities around us, but I think, I don't know, I think they pick and choose. They uh, used who, to. Yeah, I know. And that's the I only way. I think they way. pick and choose who they're going to post in their paper. You know, it comes Well, that out kind of seems things. like maybe somebody's not wanting the older general public to find out what's happening at these meetings. You know, that was my concern. They said, is there somebody stopping them from publishing this? Henry? Uh, yes. That, there's no one here telling the, the free press that they cannot come. Um, it would be my assumption, this is only my assumption, is that as we know what's going on with uh, print media currently, right, it's, it's not what it used to be. We used to have a, um, a, a person, who, a reporter that would yeah. come to every meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they don't have all those reporters anymore. Um, it sounds like they just have one or two people trying to put the whole newspaper together. So that, there's always a seat open for any free press that wants to come here and, and do articles. Um, anytime <laughs> the press reaches out to us, we give them all the information that they need. We pass them on to council if, if they would like quotes from them or, but. So in other words, there is no way for the older general public without a computer to know what's happening. Mr. Anyone? Norman? Mr. Norman? If you could use the mic too so we can hear it in the recording, thank you. Uh, so, okay, so the, the solution would be can the council or administration, whichever one of you, we put ads in the paper for bids, we put ads in the paper for public hearings, why could we not put an ad in the paper for, hey, here's, here's the upcoming meetings, I mean, it's an expense, but I mean, come on, we're spending money like it's, there's no tomorrow anyway, so what's another 100 or 200 a month to put in the meeting schedule actually in the paper? Well, I think too what she's <laughs> talking about is uh, actually what's happening in yeah, our meetings. Like post. they used to post, you know, this person said this, this person said meeting. that. Because I'm actually, I'm kind of concerned about that too. Every once in a while, I'll look in the paper just to see if there's anything in there. I'll go through the whole paper, and there's the, absolutely nothing at all about The only about way women. I know is a gentleman that has started his website, but I have a uh, Facebook. Mm. So I know, but a lot of my generation, they don't do Facebook. Mm -hmm. I have a daughter who's 40. <clears throat> she doesn't do Facebook. So the other people, older people's not knowing and I think you'd get more people out to vote if they would knew the consequences of what was happening. Mr. President. Yes. Thank you for my time. Thank you. Just a couple thoughts. First of all, we do post, and you, as you get, you ask for, you give permission to, to post those in the messenger for the resolutions and ordinances are passed. Although, 
it's hard to tell what they're for. It just says resolution 123-23, a resolution to appropriate funds, tells you absolutely nothing, yeah. right? So obviously th th I think that could be fixed and hopefully our next clerk will help us fix that so that it makes a little more sense. And the second thing, the thought that I had was, we, you know what, we can roll back the time to when you were a young lady and they didn't have computers. You know what they had? They had mailing lists. Yeah. You know, we could start a mailing list. Why couldn't we? If you're someone that wants this information and, and the minutes are done, yeah. you know, we, could, we can appropriate money to pay for this to be printed out and mailed to people so at least they have information because that's, that's the only other way to do it if there's not a paper and they don't have a computer. Well, there you go. Everyone That's a good idea. Line. There's an option too. Right. See, you're coming up with coming up with solutions. But will they be acted on? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Mr. President. Y yes, go ahead. Um, before you close, the audience concerns. We have another audience concern too. Okay. After okay. That. Okay. But be before we close this, you go ahead, walk up here. I'm just going to say this. Um, there were a number of people that have sent emails with their concerns. Um, Mr. Mayor read a bunch of them last time. He might have some more for his part tonight. There's one I'd like to ask if he's going to read. Um, I we did receive a few. I see my name and Josh Peters' name was almost on one. They got that a little wrong. Um, so my name's on two that I'd seen, and you might have others yourself that you want to, to read. I just want to know if we're going to bring those up in the audience concern portion. Can I just say, as you guys know, I wasn't supposed to be here tonight, but St. Patrick's Christmas uh, program got moved to Tuesday, and that's why I came tonight. Um, all the emails that I received, I forwarded to you guys, so you guys all got those. If there was, the only one that maybe I did not was um, Virginia Alder, but she said that she had reached out to you guys. Yeah, I so, have I have that. Yeah, so um, um, I but, see you forwarded one from Autumn Fagan or yeah. yeah it, Fagan. Any any one that I got right when I get it, I just forwarded it to you because I, I did not believe I would be here tonight. We didn't find out till yesterday that they had to move the program. Okay, so so we have that one, and there was another one that was sent, and you read her email last time, Mayor, and that was um, Stephanie Mack, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and she sent that, and then I reached out to her today and just said, I don't know if anybody's contacted you because we were on the list. I'll be happy to read it. And she said that she would prefer to withdraw that email from being read. Um, and I said, well, do you want to reword this in some way? Because she felt that maybe she was a little over the top. And I said, do you want to reword this? And she came back and said, no, I, no, thank you. I appreciate it, but no. So um, I'm giving everybody a heads up, Derek, because I told her I would tell people that. Okay. But, but otherwise, we have, I have a few here. All right, thank you. I just want Andrea Dillion, 66 East 5th Street. I just have a question. Can we go ahead and accept the um, demolition and do that and have a vacant lot and then go ahead and for however long, a year, two years, whatever, coordinate with the other gymnasiums in town and use that until something better could be built? So that was going to be, um, Andrea, yeah. I'm, gl I'm glad you brought that up. I'm, um, <laughs> So that was going to be brought up because we had our bid opening. Was it yesterday or the day before? Either way, we had the bid opening for the demolition, um, and it needs to be um, awarded. We'd like to award tomorrow. So we need to know what council wants to do, if tear down that building or not. Um, and then, yes, and we did, and I spoke about this. Myself and Landon McKenzie went and had a meeting with Jimmy uh, Wolverton, the um, – uh, athletic director for London City Schools, and that's where we came up with the plan for the one-year, the one-year plan. Um, so we currently do have a one-year plan on how to get through the next year. Yeah, yeah. If if that's what council wants us to do, because they're the ones who passed the legislation to demolish. To, accept, to go out for bid and accept the bid and demolish that building. So if, if they would like to change that, and that's why I asked them to give me some recommendation, and Brian Robinson's the only one I heard from. So 
that's why I was going to bring that up in my city official reports. Thank you. Okay, that's all we have for our all these Yes. Well, we have except we have, for the uh, email. Yes, yeah, so we have. I have four here. Does anybody okay. else have the one from Autumn Fagnan? If that's how you pronounce her name. If not, then I'll read it. I know she emailed all. Do of you us have on there. Uh, Jerry Alder? Or? I have. I have. Well, it's actually from Virginia. Okay. The email says Jerry, but it's signed Virginia. Okay. So do you want to read that one? Yes, I can. You'll, you'll do that one. So I'll do this one first. Okay. I have the one from uh, Virginia Alder. I have one from Michelle Davis, if anybody else has that. And I have one from Tabitha Kaufman, okay. if anybody else has that. Because I'm willing to share these with you guys. I don't want to have to read them all. And, Andrew, you did a really nice job uh, reading that. I'd, I'd have you read things anytime because you didn't stumble over anything. Yes, ma'am? I have a question. Yes. Thank you for using the microphone. Uh, my name is Marilyn Crevacy. I live at 398 Bishop Drive. If we can do the schools for a year, why can't we continue to do that and get the police done, the fire station done, and the water done before you go building a rec center? I don't understand. You can do it for a year. Yeah, so, can... so the, the growth of everything is going to handcuff us probably within, within a year of trying to get enough gym time to um, for all the teams, right? So say, for example, this year in the kindergarten one, instead of having seven or eight kids on the team, there's nine or ten kids on the team because there are so many kids, but we don't have enough hoops for them all to practice. So for a year, we felt that we could, we could – um, work around it with one probably having less practices so the kids aren't going to get to practice as much um, there's going to be some later practices we don't like to have the kids have to have an 8 8 p.m. practice 9 p.m. practice the other thing is, is at any point the schools can bump us so if we're in a gym and they go hey wrestling needs that gym today we're bumped <coughs> and so we were just trying to work through and almost beg for a year's worth while we try to get through this process. What about the church she was talking about? So that, we had to do that before too when um, the heat went out in the other building. And, um, you know, it, it, is, it is an option. Um, I just don't know how great of a viable option it would be. One is... Um, one is is that now you're moving kids all around. So it's nice because we have them all in one place. We have two people that work for Parks and Recreation. Okay. So right now, Landon McKenzie is not here today because Adam is off tonight and Landon had to go do the games tonight. So if you're talking about using five, six different gyms, the city needs to have five or six employees to go and oversee these <coughs> practices, these games, and things like that. I understand it's important for the kids. Okay. But I understand, you know, we have, I and my family has so much money coming in a month, and I think you need to prioritize. We need the police. We need the fire station. There's certain things that we need that we can't be kept putting off. The kids, I understand. But the pay increases, the taxes, you guys got to prioritize what is important. And if you can get other places for the kids to go, it might be a little bit hairy here and there, but the police, the fire should be first, in my opinion. Ma'am, what was your last name? Krevisich, K-R-I-V-I-C-I-C-H. Wait a minute, K-R-I-V-I-C-I-C-H. <laughs> I-C-H, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll okay. start. Um, Autumn Fagnan, F-A-G-N-A-N, if I mispronounce your last name, I apologize. My name is Autumn Fagnan, my husband is Ryan, I grew up my entire life on the hilltop in Columbus. We just bought a house out here in London in March. My husband is a truck driver for UPS and I'm a stay-at-home mom. We have three kids, two boys, one for or first and third grade, both in London football and both in basketball. One wreck and the other one in travel for London. So we have a long haul left in us for sports here in London. Plus, we have a younger daughter who I hope will want to be active in sports as well. We decided to make London our home to raise our family because of how involved this community is and how slow-paced things are than in Columbus. 
the crime rate is, at least to me, non-existent compared to the west side of Columbus. <coughs> we love being here. I mean, I've made myself, I made I myself have made new friends through the sports programs and have family out here as well. My boys, with being in sports, have made so many new friends and connections with their coaches even before they started London City Schools in August. I am deeply disappointed that there's even talk about not wanting to move forward with a new rec center. Sports are my boy's life outside of the obvious of school, church, and family. As I know a ton of other families as well, considering how many kids are just in rec basketball this season, which I think is around 300, I have become a full-out sports mom in a matter of less than a year. I'm driving here and there and doing snacks and drop-offs and pickups, and I wouldn't change a thing about it. My kids are thriving in life now. They have friends. My oldest son, when I went to conferences, his teacher asked if he had any questions if I had any questions with us being new to the school in town, and I expressed my concern about him being very emotional and reserved. She was shocked. I brought it up because she said he's so confident in himself. I was literally taken aback by this. Never has he been that way. Why do I tell you this? Because of sports. My sons are getting a different taste of how life is in a sense of community and love and thoughtfulness and family and discipline from his coaches and teammates in football and the beginning of basketball. I cried on my way home after that conference because I personally struggled with, are they doing well? Do people like them? What if this isn't the right choice? All the things a normal parent would worry about after making a big move. At that moment, I knew my husband and I made the correct choice to make the move to London. My kids have people now. They have friends. They're making a family from the coaches and teammates that they're meeting with on almost a daily basis for practice and games. On top of this, my kids are extremely active now. They're doing things instead of sitting on the couch or in their rooms playing or watching TV. I know my neighbors homeschool their children, and he plays rec ball as well. If there's no rec ball, where would he play? Because he doesn't go to public school and, and know about the travel team. My father is a police officer for Franklin Township in Columbus, and do you know how many kids he sees who aren't involved in sports or extracurriculars being in trouble or arrested? Countless on a daily basis. It's honestly just sad. This rec center may seem like a frivolous spending to some or a little higher taxes, but us parents with parents or parents with children who want the best for our kids, we see it as so much more than just a building or a little more on taxes each year. We see this as a home and safe place for our kids to let loose and use that energy into something positive. So please consider this when taking a vote. Wouldn't you rather see our kids playing sports, being active, learning discipline, and getting all of that energy out in a positive, productive manner? Or do we want to save a couple extra bucks and allow our children to miss out on opportunities to grow, socializing in a positive way, or sit at home or running the streets? Thank you for your time, Ryan and Autumn Fagnan. There's that one. Who's next? All right. I'll have to read this. Uh, and it's from Virginia Alder. It says, uh, Mr. Comer, I guess we are supposed to write you on our views of this pay raise for officials and this basketball <coughs> building. I am totally against both. We as a community need to look at what is a necessity and look at, need to look at what is a necessity and what is a want. The economy shows us that people, that money is very tight and it is making it, and it is making it citizens living a very tight budget. Let's focus on what is needed and then we can look at what we want as a community. For some reason, this building has gone from zero to 100. Let's review what is needed. If needing parking, heating, etc. My biggest concern about this building came from Tammy's post on Facebook that you cannot use church or school gyms because the children's shoes will ruin the floors, that the park and rec kids use the same shoes off the street. Do you want to spend $2 million on a building that the floors will be damaged? Now for the pay raises. Do you know of anyone who is getting a 12% increase? Our retired citizens only get an 8%, I believe. What businesses is giving their employees 12%? I guess zero. The taxes are getting out of hand, and you and our administration is running our young adults out of town because they cannot afford to live here and work outside of London. Let's take a step back and look at the entire picture. Let's fix the broken, the requirements, and the needs, not add more until we can at least overcome this recession that is going to hit us hard. Virginia Alder. 
You want to go next? <clears throat> sure, I have one. Uh, this one was sent to Greg and it's supposed to be to myself as well, but she messed up on my email. So uh, Greg gave this to me to read. Um, good evening. First off, I would like to take a minute and say thank you for reading this aloud. I am unable to attend tonight's meeting as my daughter is in a basketball game next door at the community center. I will start with a proposal of a new gym being built for 2.8 million for which the London voters have turned down the levies twice. There are several gymnasiums throughout the city that could be utilized for youth sports. The need for a new building does not outweigh the need to fix our infrastructures. Several infrastructural needs such as drainage, backing up into yards, fire, EMS, and the city's water, just to name a few. Personally, there are days I smell sewage when running bath water for my kids and chunks of stuff coming out into the tub. Then a few days later, a chlor chlorine smell to fix the issue. I have to purchase bottled water and jugs of water for my family to use, as well as to water my dogs because he was getting sick when I was using the city water. I'm seeing more and more housing developments coming to the city, but the infrastructure is not solid. You can't build a house on a broken foundation. We can't expand without fixing the infrastructure first. In regards to any tax increase or pay raise for city officials, I ask you this. Was 30 plus percent increase that was given in 2020 not enough? The mayor's salary alone doubled from 30,000 to 60,000. Not one of us hardworking individuals in this city have ever seen a 30 plus percent, let alone an additional 12% raise two years later. The city even removed the 0.5 tax credit of all residents working outside the city. There was even fees added to the water bill for storm water or storm sewer that hasn't been fixed. How can the council even discuss, consider a new building when the current infrastructure has not been addressed? Why would the city council believe that any future levies would be passed approved by our community if the 2.8 million is used for this proposed building? Thank you for listening to my concerns and please advise me when these concerns have been addressed. Concerned London resident, Tabitha Kaufman. Okay, I have one more from Michelle Davis. City council persons, please vote no on the basketball courts. City residents already voted. We did not want the rec center council proposed. This is an absurd price for just basketball courts. If you want tax money for this, you should present plans for a building everyone in the city can use and benefit from. A community center with basketball courts, a workout facility, and a pool should be included, and this should be in a few years. Not right now when everyone is struggling as it is. Also, doesn't the city need money for the fire department? Quit asking taxpayers to dig deeper while trying to pass more loans we need to pay for. Vote no on the, ro on the raises. Most of the people in London did not get a 12% raise, and neither should you. You should not get to vote on raises for yourself. Ask the taxpayers if you deserve a raise and put it on the ballot. Also, this new ordinance you're trying to pass about grass fines needs further thought. Vote no on this. This doesn't seem like a very neighborly thing to do. You can't just slap a notice on someone's door and charge them $75. Have some compassion about <coughs> residents' situations. There are a lot of elderly and poor people who struggle to find the time, energy, and or equipment to mow their grass every week. Maybe try notifying them first and then a fine. Maybe try helping them instead of trying to take money out of their pockets. I mean, $75 to city council might not seem much, but $75 to the poor is everything. I see a lot of abandoned houses with the grass cut but falling apart. What does the city plan to do about that? In closing, I do not think this administration shows they care about the residents. This administration shows they care about themselves and don't care about what the voters are telling them. Show the voters you care for a change. Thanks, city taxpayer Michelle Davis. All right. That all of our uh, emails that we have received. Thank you for reading those. Any discussion on those? All right, we will uh, move on to our committee reports. We'll begin with, uh, let's see here, Mr. Stahl. I attended the Finance Committee and I also attended the uh, Safety Service Committee, and I have a report for the, uh, uh, the Division of Fire and EMS. The Departmental EMS Training and Aggressive Palliative Care Madison Health, Departmental Fire Training, New Part-Time Orientation and Forcible Entry, provided EMS for high school football playoff games, 
They completed hose acceptance testing, began the tour drive set up, picked up donated tours from several organizations, and participated in active aggressive drill with the LPD. Uh, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hitt. Yeah, I attended the safety committee meeting, and I'll give the police chief's report that he submitted for that. I'll read through it. Uh, he stated that they're continuing to their selection process for two open officer positions. No one was selected from the most recent test, and they're accepting applications through December 31st. Sergeant Linda Sullivan will be retiring in January of 2023 after 26 years. Uh, Officer Michael Orohood was promoted to the position of sergeant on November 28th. Officer Eric Langham was selected as our school resource officer and will start in January working with London schools. Officer Harris and Sergeant Orohood conducted in-service training for our officers and neighboring agencies on OVI arrest procedures. A patrol rifle certification class was held for several area officers by Detective White last month. Um, they've been without Cruiser 12 for several weeks due to mechanical problems. <coughs> However, it ex is expected to be completed <coughs> this week. Uh, they obtained an unmarked rebuilt Tahoe for the res result of a forfeiture case from November 2021. This uh, replaced the anticipated capital request for an unmarked vehicle next year and resulted in the savings of approximately $20,000. New body camera systems were received and they will be changed over in February of 2023. Uh, an exercise during an early release professional development day at London schools was designed and conducted at the middle school, evaluating school staff and police responses to an active aggressor. Madison County EMA, Madison County Sheriff's Office, 911 Dispatch Center, and London Fire participated as well. Uh, they received a $7,000 grant for bulletproof vests for up to eight vest purchases that uh, will be incurred in the next year. And this was is a 70 75% cost reimbursement grant. And that is it. All right, thank you. Mr. Hayes. Okay, I attended safety meeting and BPU meeting. I have like 15 sheets of paper here to read off of, so be patient. Okay, uh, safety meeting. Uh, we approved the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, got a report on fire hydrants. They're in good shape. All of the out-of-service fire hydrants have been replaced. Five older hydrants need replaced, but they're still working efficiently, and they will be replaced probably early spring. Um, fire department, as a side note, they just received six new cold water emergency suits. Uh, what those are, they can go in. Somebody's in a car, goes into a lake or a pond, they can use those suits and go in and try to rescue somebody out of a car. And there was no cost to the city for that. Okay, under safety service director, we have some new apartments coming to town. They're called Kenny Station Apartments. They'll be on Kenny Road. Um, through the Planning and Zoning Commission, we took the apartments from 61 apartments down to 55, that's a stipulation. Uh, they had an entrance to the east that would come right into the entrance to London Village condominiums and right next to the Chamber of Commerce, which would cause probably cause some serious accidents. So we did have them move their driveway to the west side of the complex as to be built there. It will be divided. They'll have an island down the middle. Um, there'll be three readings on this. It'll be a public hearing, and that will be on February the 16th. Uh, there's a motion to send it to council. Uh, motion passed. Um, Mr. Stahl will be sponsoring it. Um, there's no Section 8 or subsidized housing in these apartments. They will rent for $1,200 a month. Um, 
under new business, uh, changing the code for storm water sewers. Uh, that's still under study, and uh, probably by next month's meeting, we'll have that worked out. Um, under old business, this come up again, uh, feral cats. So I have a party that's coming to the next safety meeting that's going to address that, going to hopefully help us with that situation and get that taken care of. I know it's getting to be a, a serious situation in some of the downtown areas. So hopefully uh, that'll be taken care of next month. Uh, we did adjourn about 545. Okay, I'm going to jump over to VPU meeting notes. This is my first meeting with this, uh, so bear with me because some of this I'm not real familiar with, so just bear with me. Um, first thing we had was uh, we had an executive session about pay. Uh, this is something that is not high pay or anything like that. It was just an employee thing that's going on. Second thing, uh, Steve Skaggs, he asked for an update on the water and we're hooked up with the county. And we have got a county hookup for water on state route number 38. This would be an emergency valve only. It would be used in case uh, we had a dire emergency in the city. So that is completed on 38. There was an RFQ uh, award that was word, awarded to Burgess and Nipple Engineering. Uh, this is for the water treatment facility uh, services for that uh, plant over there. Uh, they're going to upgrade it and it will be improvements. Uh, and I'm reading off some other notes here, so bear with me. Um, we talked about the towers getting down so far we felt we might need to put some uh, regulations in there the powers the towers can't go down any lower than a set amount like 20 feet 25 feet uh, that's going to be discussed at our next meeting uh, got some more notes here Okay. There is a screw press uh, to repair that. That was uh, that contract was awarded to Dahl and Lehman out of Tip City. Uh, there's no contract on it yet, but the bid was is going out to them. But uh, there's nothing concrete on that at this particular point. Um, $6,500 was approved for an automatic gate opener out at the dump um, so people can get in there at different times of the day and night when we don't have a man there. Uh, some the companies come in at 4 o'clock in the morning, some come at 8 o'clock at night. Uh, there's just different times, so we are going to put an automatic gate opener on there there will be codes for each company coming in so they will use their own code um, holiday trash schedule uh, it will be they will get free pickup all your uh, boxes trash all that uh, they'll be running probably a day behind but all that you set it out it will be picked up no extra charge for that um, there was a question about the aqua and as I stated earlier uh, aqua has sent a letter of intent that has gone to the law director uh, waiting on a reply from the law director and basically we went back into executive session again over another matter uh, and the meeting ended at 2 17 p.m. and I hope I answered some of your questions. Oh, I do want to talk about one other thing. Uh, well drilling. 
for new water. We, drew, we drilled a test well, 275 feet. Got into ammonia again. So we are going to do a new well and we're going down 425 to 500 feet. Uh, the drill has got a new casing that we can do that. It has come in. Uh, when you go past 275 feet, you have to cap it off. So we'll have to cap the old one off. You cannot drill in the same well where you've been. You have to go and drill into a new well. So uh, that is ongoing, but hopefully if everything works out, we'll have some uh, new water, hopefully in the spring. Uh, pray about that. Uh, I think that's all I've got. Okay, thank you. Mr. Robinson? Uh, I attended public service, so I'll go over both uh, departments. Uh, first, the street department. Uh, they worked on equipment. Uh, they patched uh, potholes on the streets and on, in the alley. Uh, they put up the Christmas lights uh, around town and all the Christmas ornaments on the light poles. Uh, they cleaned up, or they set up and cleaned up the old-fashioned Christmas. Um, they've been cleaning up ditches, uh, removing trees. Uh, they've been working on cleaning catch basins, fixing sewer lines. Uh, there was a water main break on Elm Street that they fixed. Uh, there's a traffic light on Kenny and Lafayette that they've had to work with. Um, this time of year, I guess the lights is messing with the sensor, so they had to move it down correctly. We move it down so it didn't catch so much of the light. Um, one thing that you know, we talk about, uh, they cleaned up trash on Lafayette Street, and I know we hear a lot of people talk about our town looking trashy. One of the things that we can do, it. I used to walk around London cleaning up trash, is everybody quit littering. <laughs> yeah. I mean, pick up after yourself, there's trash cans. Quit littering, it, it looks awful. You go down there by Walmart and it looks awful. Pick up after yourself. I, I don't think we should tell grown adults they have to pick up after themselves, but I guess we do. Um, so what else? That's about it. Uh, they finished up the car charging station as well. Uh, I'll go over Landon's with the uh, Parks and Rec. Um, so the overhead lighting at the swimming pool has been completed. Uh, all lights were converted to LED to help save on electric cost. Um, and they're brighter as well. Uh, winter basketball, there's 297 kids registered this season. Uh, we've had our first games now a couple weeks ago. Uh, they'll continue all the way through January 14th. Uh, all the games are being held at the community center here currently. So far, the revenue that's been brought in so far, uh, registration was 21480 a mission was 3,937. Um, he is going to get back to me about, they have punch holes. So they have, uh, I think, what, a 5, a 10, or a 10, 25, 20, and a 30. So he was going to have a breakdown of, because the missions weren't 397, or 3,000, almost 4,000 people coming through on the first weekend. So it's punch cards. So he's going to have a breakdown on that. I think concessions was 680. And that was just the first weekend. Uh, the parks, um, the three trash cans have been delivered for Merrimack Shelter House. They won't be installed until the spring. Um, the new Christmas lights were purchased to hang along uh, Main Street and the Shelter House at Cowling Park. Uh, the, they went through it. Adam and Landon went through the pool operators test and they're both certified. Their license are good for five years. Uh, spring volleyball, um, there's talks with London schools in the fall to give them allowance to run their spring volleyball. No, I'm sorry. They were given permission in the fall for their spring youth volleyball league to be held there. Uh, they're going to move meet again to see when the dates are going to be. Um, Mr. Eads asked uh, about different um, 
programs that he's looking to start. Um, they're looking to utilize the same volleyball courts down at the pool with open nets or leagues. Um, he's also trying to gauge interest in the softball leagues, which have kind of diminished in the past few years. Uh, and then there was a couple other ideas thrown out there, wiffle ball leagues, and uh, that's about it. Our next public service meeting will be on January 4th at 6 p.m. All right, thank you. Mr. Peters? I have nothing. All right, Mr. Eads. Mr. Eads, I also attended that meeting with Mr. R Robinson, and he just took care of both parts. Thank you very much. I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, I attended the finance meeting also with Mr. Stahl. Um, we've had a long meeting. It's not going to get any shorter no matter what. But uh, just very quickly, uh, at finance, it was a pretty laid-back meeting. We didn't have a lot to discuss. Uh, the big thing that's going to come up, which is going to come up, is new ordinance tonight. And don't be surprised, and let's say this now, the fire department still isn't funded, and we're going to have a 0.25% income tax that's going to go on the levy. New legislation is being presented tonight to bring that so that we can have three readings and have it done before the February 1st deadline that we're going to have to do that. So that was the big thing that came out of that. Um, I'll give you just a quick aside. Mr. Uh, Comer um, isn't, he wasn't in favor of this per se thinks that we should bring other things back and do them as different three different levies or two different levies but we chose that night to just bring the one for the fire department moving forward at this time so uh beyond that um <coughs> we're not broke yet and we've got a budget we're going to pass here in a little bit so that's i'm not going to go into any more about that all right okay thank you all for your reports on to city official reports As my Christmas gift to you guys, I'm only going to talk about three things real fast. One thing is I want to thank the Madison County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Uh, a couple quick things. They had their open house with, with all their Christmas stuff. It was very nice. And then last night was the uh, Christmas cabaret that they asked me to participate in, and it was a great show and very a bunch of very talented people uh, singing uh, Christmas songs. It was very nice. Um, thank you to everyone who donated and helped out with Shop with a Cop. Um, I know there was multiple ones around the county, but I can speak on the one for the City of London. Was able to help uh, quite a few kids, and, and they had so much money in reserve from the year before, they didn't have to do their big fundraiser this year, and also because uh, people just keep donating to it. So um, I know there was a lot of needy kids um, who maybe wouldn't have had such a great Christmas if it wasn't for our London Police Department and shop with a cop. Um, I also was able to have a meeting with representatives from the governor's office and Mike Carey's office and um, the AG's office, and um, we're going to start having some more regular meetings to talk about different things. Um, a big one is funding and making sure that we are going after all the assets we can funding-wise through the uh, state and federal government. So that's it. Merry Christmas. All right, thank you. On to our old business. Uh, we have our several tabled items, and that is Ordinance 146.22, Ordinance 147.22, and Ordinance 151.22. Any discussion on those? Ordinance 151.22. Uh -huh. uh, Palti is still interested in coming here. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yes, if you go ahead and speak on that, thanks. I know that there were some comments made earlier, but um, I actually saw you at Butcher Block when I went and had a me meeting a couple days ago with um, um, Mr. Uh, Hills from Pulte, and he was able to show me. He didn't want to release it to me, but he showed me um, kind of what they were thinking because they had to work around that wetland area. Um, he asked that the legislation stay tabled, that hopefully uh, in the beginning of next year they'll be able to come back because they are going to have to change their PUD, but it's not going to be a big enough change that it has to go back to Planning Commission. They're going to go from 256 homes to 255 homes, um, and they are now hopefully going to be 
finalizing the contract with the <coughs> landowner about the couple uh, issues that they had earlier. They are sti still very much um, interested in this project and working toward this project. And that meeting was Wednesday or Thursday. I had a lunch meet, or no, I'm sorry, today's Thursday. It was uh, Tuesday, I believe. What day was it? Aaron? What day were you at Butcher Plug? <laughs> <laughs> so Tuesday, I believe. So, yes. All right. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, anything else? Okay. On uh, to our uh, next for the fifth reading, uh, Ordinance Two Zero Four Twenty Two, a motion to read by title or number. So move. Second. All right. Ordinance Two Zero Four Twenty Two, sponsored by Andrew Hitt. An ordinance amending official zoning map. So this is uh, changing the zoning from M1 to PUD, and this is the property between Cherry and West First Street, and this is the property of the plans to uh, put in storage units um, out by the football field along Cherry Street. All right, any further discussion here? This is the fifth reading on this one. And we had our public hearing. Move to adopt. Move to second. Adopt. All right, so we have a first uh, to adopt and a second, and we'll take our roll call here. Uh, Mr. Eads? Yes. All right, Mr. Peters? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. All right, Mr. Hitt? Yes. And Mr. Stahl? Yes. All right, Ordinance 20422 is adopted. On to Ordinance 20522, a motion to read by title or number. So, so moved. Move. Second. All right. Ordinance 20522, sponsored by John Stahl, an ordinance offending, uh, uh, amending official zoning map. This is for the property at Maple East Center for a bed and breakfast. It's right next to the Ohio Erie Trail, as we talked about. Okay, and uh, Mr. Knowles gave us some information on that. I think that is really awesome mm -hmm. there, because we do have, an, and it's a perfect location, I think, for the Ohio Erie Trail, because right there where Eminem Diner is at, uh, behind there, I think the counter had, uh, I know a couple years ago it was like 4,000 people or so would uh, come through there, but they wouldn't necessarily go all the way through, but up to that point, 4,000 plus people, and this is a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think that will be a perfect place for that uh, bed and breakfast. Any Move other? to adopt. Okay. I'm second. Move to adopt in a second. Take the roll call. Mr. Stahl? Yes. Mr. Hitt? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. And Mr. Eads? Yes. Okay. Ordinance 20522 has been adopted. All right. On to uh, Old Business Third Reading. Uh, Ordinance 21222, a motion to read by title or number. So moved. Second. All right. Ordinance 21222, sponsored by John Stahl, an ordinance amending Section 660 of the Codified Ordinance. This is one we've talked about, mowing grass. Anyone have a, a fee of $75 on, on it? And it's, it's more on, than people, they just keep ignoring it all the time. It's always the same people every year. And uh, it's a needed thing. All right, any further discussion on 212? What is the height requirement for grass, do you know? 10 inches? I think it's 10. Right. I think it's 10. It's 8 or 10 inches. Okay. Well, I know it was brought up about uh, in one of the emails about the mowing the grass, and you'd have to let your grass go for quite a while to get up to 10 inches, 8 or 10 inches. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think that's. And I get. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think yeah, that's I mowing get, or missing mowing for a week or two. It's missing mowing for possibly the whole summer, <laughs> or several months anyway. First offense. No one is charged. They get a notice, and then they have time to get that yard mowed. If it's not done, then they get charged. It's not charged right off the bat, like it was stated in the email. Only time it would be charged right off the bat is if it's a second offense. Okay. We don't give them a notice anymore. This legislation allows them to just go ahead and get it mowed again because <laughs> it's obvious that if they didn't do it the first time, they're not going to do it the second time either. Yeah, and kind of the thinking is that uh, 
because the process takes a while, uh, people are just using the city to mow their lawn and uh, not incurring any kind of fine. Mm -hmm. They would just pay the cost of getting the lawn mowed at their expense. Um, so this would hopefully provide some incentive to mow your lawn or okay. when it gets way out of hand. All right. All right. Thank you. Anything further? All right. On to ordinance 215. 22, a motion to read this, by title. Or, this, go ahead. this is the third reading. Yeah, you want oh, yeah, that's yes. right. This is the third reading. Mm -hmm. Did we want move, to move uh, to adopt second? Go with that. Okay. So we have a motion to adopt. Who was that? Who moved to adopt? Uh, Mr. John. Stahl. I thought John just moved to adopt and second. And second. <laughs> I heard both. I thought he did. <laughs> so so he has a motion. Somebody else you're, you're second. All right. So John has the motion. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Mr. Hitt. Get her done. Second. There you go. Okay. The motion and no, second. All right, so uh, we'll take a roll call. Uh, Mr. Stahl? Yes. Mr. Hitt? Yes. All right. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. All right. Mr. Eats? Yes. Right. 212 has been adopted. Now on to Ordinance 21522, a motion to read by title or number. So moved. Second. Ordinance 21522, sponsored by Josh Peters, an ordinance to make appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of London, State of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2023. Yeah, so this is our uh, 2023 expense budget. Um, general fund total. $6,377,620.95. And then the uh, grand total for the budget for the year, $21,824.452.15. Or $21 million, yes. Well, yeah. $21 million, eight, it's, it's a long night. <laughs> We're done. Sure it is. $21,824,452.15. <laughs> Mr. President, yes, I move that we table this until after 216 and 217 are determined. That way, we don't have to come back and make a change later if those are defeated to take the two hundred thousand dollars out. Right, because that uh, two hundred thousand is already included in this current budget. Correct? Huh? Why? I don't. I don't understand why. Well, we, no, we don't want to. Right. You think we're not capable of that? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was easier this way. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Eats. We'll do that. We'll uh, table that until. Well, you have to get a second. You have yeah, to get the vote. Get but so we have a motion to table. Yes, sir. And we have a second to table that. Okay. No, we do not. You do not. So what are our wishes here? It's our third reading. For 21522. For our budget. Does somebody move to adopt? Do we want to I'm going to move to adopt. There you go. Our budget as it is. Okay. So we have a motion to adopt our budget for uh, 2023. All right. I'll second. Second. I threw everybody off. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Great, thanks. So we have a first and a second. We'll take a roll call for adoption. Mr. Stahl? Yes. Mr. Hitt? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. All right. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Or Mr. Eads? No. Okay. 21522 has been adopted. Okay. On to uh, resolution 21622, a motion to read by title or number. So moved. Second. All right. First and second. <coughs> resolution 21622, sponsored by Josh Peters, a resolution authorizing the safety service director to enter into contract with Madison County Future Inc. So this is, <coughs> um, oh, Dave Kell was here earlier speaking on this. Um, and that's the least the land out there to build a new gym. Any questions? Right, and this has an emergency on here, so we need uh, five votes for this. 
right, so resolution 216, there are wishes here. We have any discussion? Um, well, I, I, I think we've heard from a lot of people, whether they're here, whether they brought them in as Andrea did, I, I think that this is, I still think this is the wrong time. I, I think we have to worry about a fire department first and that should be our priority. Would I like to see it eventually? I would. Do I want to see it now? I don't because if we pass this part, then we have to pass the next part. We're in debt. We know we're going to be in debt for $200,000 plus, whatever that is, and we may have to fund a fire department for five to $800,000. I'll be generous and say it's only going to be five, but it could be eight, and that's going to have to come out of the general fund later. Mm -hmm. And I still think this is the wrong time to do this. We can come back and do it because, quite honestly, the, the fear, and we're going to hear about this in the next part, the fear was that the, in, or the uh, interest rates were going to go up, 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 and they've come down or they've stayed level. I, I think that buys us the time that if we don't do this now, we don't have to be in fear right now of those jumping up because they didn't do it now. They've stayed level. And, and that's to, to the credit of whoever that we have that opportunity. Now, if we say, nope, we're going to hold off, we can do that because we don't have to be afraid of the, the, the interest rate on the bonds. So that's my, that's, that's my two cents. Thank you very much. Correct. And, and I'll go ahead. I'll let you go first. Yeah. The <clears throat> big thing here is, you know, being on finance committee and stuff, big worry is funding the fire department. I think we need to press this next levy. Um, we got to push it hard. Once we pass that levy, then we can go on to this gym. I want a new gym or community center. I think it'd be great to have a community center. Um, you know, Pat asked what, you know, where are some things we could do? I mean, I think best thing to do is partner with the schools. They're not going to let these kids sit. They're going to do things to make gym available for these kids, knowing that we're going through this process. Get with the upward, upward sports program there at the church. Maybe they do kindergarten through third grade, and then the city does fourth through sixth. Um, is an idea. Um, but the school, Dr. Kramer, Jimmy Wolverton, basketball coaches, they're not going to let this stuff die. The volleyball coaches, they're, they're going to want these kids playing. Um, you know, and the, you talk about the building being built, takes 16, 18 months. And, you know, we're looking at maybe one year next winter, which we projected, possibly two. Um, but that's my, that's my feeling. Okay, my thoughts on that as well, you know, we need to prioritize and we're prioritizing our kids as well. You know, we definitely want to be able to present something presentable uh, for our community. We don't want to just have something that's basically, uh, you know, like disposable. It's like, you know, we can get this right now because it, it just makes do for right now and it's okay for London. That's not okay for London. If we want to make this a absolutely top-notch community, uh, that people want to live in. Uh, it has beautiful amenities, things like that. That's something that you look for. Say you even go on vacation somewhere, a uh, hotel, you're not going to look for the hotel that has the least amenities. You're going to look for a hotel that's going to have things for you to do. You're going to look for, uh, and the quality of those things to do. And I think that if we take more time and we go back to the drawing board and listen to the community, that's one of the first things we need to do, we, we know some people are for it, some people are against it, but I hear a lot of people saying we want a better community uh, center proposed to us than what's uh, being presented to us. Yeah, you can add on to it, but all you're going to add on to it is another uh, pole barn to, to match the other pole barn. And, and I think that London is better than that, and we definitely need to prioritize. We need our fire EMS taken care of. We need our police taken care of, and I'll say it again, I've said it before, these things need to go on the ballot as separate issues, and I still feel that they should be on the ballot now. I don't think that fire EMS should be on there alone. I think that this should, be, should have been brought now. I think it's putting the police on the back burner when we're not uh, presenting their levy now. I think uh, all of these things are important, and every single thing should be on the, the ballot now. Uh, because they are all important now, and there isn't, it's not worth anything waiting. Uh, we need to bring these things now so the community can have their chance to voice their opinion because it's the community's voice that matters. It's your money, it's not ours. We can't make it personal. It's the community's money, and if this is what they want, 
then this is what we should present to them. Anyone like else? Yeah, like yes. What's, um, we're able to table this. Is there any reasons why it would be bad idea to table this till after the levy in May to see what the outcome of that is? There's, I don't think there's any. Or if we decide that we can table it or we can just vote it down, either way, we can table it too. That's what we said. I mean, you can do what you want, though. Right. That's, that's I mean, right. it could be tabled till after the, see what the outcome of the levy is. Right. I think the best thing to do is to vote, it. To vote for it. I mean, to take a vote. If it passes, it passes. If it fails, you know, we bring it back up after the levy. Yeah, because right now we're not even. Okay, so what are our uh, wishes then? Move to adopt. T1622, a, a motion to adopt. Second. And we have a second for adoption, <coughs> T1622. All right. Mr. Stahl? No. Mr. Hitt? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Regretfully, no. All right. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Peters? No. Mr. Eads? No. All right. 21622 does not pass. All right. On to ordinance 21722, a motion to read by title or number. So moved. Second. All right. Ordinance 21722, sponsored by Josh Peters, an ordinance providing the issuance of not to exceed $3 million of bond by the City of London, Ohio, for the purpose of financing a portion of the cost of the acquisition and construction of a new city gymnasium and matters related to such bond and declaring an emergency. Well, I mean, this one's kind of a mute point now. Exactly. Um, what's that? Just take it off. Yeah. All right. So. We'll leave this one on. You want to table it or vote no, it down? I, I make a motion to adopt. Yeah, right. okay. Yes. And a second? Second. Okay, we got a motion to adopt and a second. Uh, the second part of that, uh, Mr. Stahl? No. All right. Mr. Hitt? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Regretfully, no. All right. Mr. Robinson? Yes. All right. Mr. Peters? No. Mr. Eads? No. All right. 21722 does not pass. Henry, may I say something? It, it, I, I promise. Well, it won't this, be, I promise it won't be negative. Okay. Well, is uh, it, it, it in regards it, to two one seven twenty two? Because two one seven twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. It, no. Okay. Because oh, oh, it's okay. voted down. It's, I, I, it's I, over. I understand. I understand. I understand how those two votes just went. I right. So it, it's it's over. So we don't have any further discussion on that. Well, I just. Okay. Okay. I just. I just wanted to make a statement, but it wasn't a negative statement. It was more of a, an ask from city council is all I was going to do. Okay. What's your ask? So first of all, I want to say that I respect your guys' votes. I, there's no ill will. We decided to tear that gym down. I tried to come up with a plan. You guys didn't agree with that plan and that's fine. I want to continue to work with you guys. The, the, the biggest thing is, um, we need to figure out, how to keep these sports going and I am asking you guys to help us with that process this is going to be kind of all hands on deck to try to get this thing figured out for the future my focus is on the kids and the youth of the of uh, about this for the future and where they're going to play um, and also to everyone out here there's no ill will I, everyone has their own opinion and that's what makes this country great so if you don't agree with the plan we came forward with, that's fine, and that's why these guys represented you, and, and they felt to, to vote that down. But, I, but my ask is, is that you guys just help us through this process so we can make sure that we keep servicing these children and give them the outlet um, that they need, and that's all I ask. All right, and we as council, our priority, too, is also the children, 100%, uh, because they are our community. You know, you, you guys know what I do every day, and that's what I've done for the past 18 years. So I've 
literally dedicated the past 18 years of my life in London to helping this whole community grow as far as the kids and everything. I've coached uh, little league teams there at the, at the, uh, gym, in the gymnasium. So, you know, we are 100% in this all together. And I feel confident that the city of London will come together as they always do uh, to support our own community. So we'll bring all of this back and, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to present a more presentable uh, gymnasium for our community who is 100% worth it. Mm -hmm. On to ordinance 21822, a motion to read by title or number. So moved, second. All right. Ordinance mm -hmm. 21822 sponsored by Josh Peters, an ordinance authorizing elected officials and appointed officials wage adjustments. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So this is resolution to, to give a 12% raise to all elected officials and appointed positions um, starting January 1st, 2024 upon election or reappointment. Okay, any uh, discussion here on 218? 22, I know that uh, we, we've had a little discussion on this, and, and I feel this is one of those things, too. It's not the right time. I also feel that uh, right now, um, you know, we don't want to make it personal about, you know, how much uh, we work or whatever like that. We know that we are public officials, and we know how that works. We're definitely not in this to get rich. Uh, we're not here for, we're definitely not here for the money. We're here to provide a service to the community, to the people who have elected us to be here. You know, there, if, if there's, you know, you want regular raises or something like that, that's may want to look at private work instead of uh, in, in, with the, the public's money uh, and, and using that, you know. So, uh, you know, that's my main thing is that we're, we're public officials and you knew what we were getting into when, when we got into it. Uh, and, and also, too, that these raises would not necessarily affect the people that are currently in office. It's the position itself that it would affect. So some of these names that are beside these positions right now may not be there in 2024. Uh, so we, you know, want to make sure that these uh, wages are set for, you know, about what you would make in that position in, in any other city similar to ours. Uh, and I'm not sure of anyone who gets a 12% raise. That is a huge, huge raise. 12% is, is, is a huge raise. So, you know, at, at average, most people may 3% or something, but again, we're elected officials, so I'm not sure how often we need to look at getting any type of rates. Yes. I just want to touch base. There's been misinformation posted on social media. You guys have stressed multiple times it's 12%. I understand that figure sounds astronomous, astronomous, excuse me, but you have to consider the whole picture. The picture is the fact that at the time this would be in effect, it will have been four years. So if you break that down on average, it's 3% per year, which is an average rate. And then it would have to go the following term before a raise could be considered again. It's not 12% within two years. It's not 12% in one year. It's 12% throughout four years. Right, but we would not be raising that incrementally, correct? That's a 12% raise at it, once. Right, it's 12% right. at once, but I think, I think what Kenna is saying correct. is that there hasn't been a raise for four years. Correct. Oh, this yeah. considers the four years that they've not been given a raise, and that sets that number for the next four years in which they will not get a raise each year while other people may. Correct. Yeah, oh, eight years. And they wouldn't be eligible for another one until 28. Is, right. This is something that can't be tabled or discussed. I, I mean, it can be discussed next year, but it, it goes in effect per term. It is not an annual. We can't raise it in the middle of a term. So just to clarify, because there's been social media posts and Beathard's email, you know, multiple information that's being misled. It's not 12 percent in one year. I think, too, that sounds crazy. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, because uh, my name is on here, uh, well, my position is on here, and if I'm city council president and this is passed, any increase that would be on that is going to be donated some way back to the city because that wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable 
getting that money because that's you know I'm a public official and this is that's what I'm here for. So that that's I would find some legal way to make sure that that would happen. So I just want to go on record as stating that, Mr. Norman. This is, uh, I guess. Uh, Could somebody silence your phone? Let, okay, thank you. <laughs> so this is more directed towards one specific um, department, and that would be our law director department. If you if you look at the research that I did, and I know that you've seen it, some of you, because I think it was passed around a little. Um, our law director currently makes about $20,000 above the average of the cities that return. And it was brought up during that process that <clears throat> the reason for that is because our law director is not able to practice law while she's our law director. And with other communities, that's not the case. It's, it's they, they can have, they do the city work and they have their own practices. So my thought on this is instead of me, the taxpayer, <clears throat> funding uh, this wage increase, uh, I think the way to go would be to redo the legislation where it opens up so that our law director can have a private practice and therefore subsidize her, her income like these other law directors around, around our community. I mean, I, I, I think instead of me funding the bill of giving her a better quality of life, that if we, if we go back and we change that wherever, wherever it is that says she can't practice uh, personal law while she's representing the city, that needs to be changed. And that's an avenue for her to make more money if she wants to make more money. But as it is right now, to make 20000 more than all the other places around us, uh, and then get 12% on top of that. I understand that's spread over four years, but really it's two years because your guys' raises went into effect in 2020, right? In but it'll be four years. But it when will it, be four years. Yeah, it'll be 20, 21, effect. 22, and 23 before it could go into effect right, in 24. But, but let's not, you know, let's not downsize that there was 100% increase there there was 33 here so you know the raise before that happened was how many years before that and you I know? understand that as well although my position and paths went from part-time to full time so that's why those were significant increases right so I'm just saying I, I think especially with the law director's position being twenty <coughs> twenty thousand dollars above the average and I, I think you, you, we could, we could uh, loosen up the reins and let her do her private practice in order for her to subsidize her income instead of us, the citizens, doing that for her. Or the position, sorry. The position. Right. Yeah, the, the position, position itself, not necessarily I, the person. I don't, I don't think that, first of all, I, I can't believe uh, as a lawyer that I would enter into a contract with the city that limited my pursuit for happiness because if I can't make money, I mean, so I, I thought that was kind of strange that we're limiting that position to just to do the city business only. I mean, it does happen. It's not like it's something crazy that we're doing, but I think if you look at the, the larger field, most of those law directors are able to take a lesser rate because they're still allowed to practice in the private field. That's, that's all I got to say. Okay, thank you. All right, any further discussion? What, there, yes. Oh, come on. It is not town hall. <laughs> Did he ever look into <coughs> just being more specific in increasing <coughs> certain salaries that actually needed it? That's... I was gonna recommend if you guys are saying you make enough and don't want, you're not in it for the money, my original proposal in finance was for the full-time elected officials only since it is our full-time job. And so I they mean, can amend if, it. You know, they we got the mayor position out of there though. 
you know, those that, hey, the main issue is that we have someone doing more work than other people, but because of the unions and increasing their pays, the people doing less are getting paid more than the person that's running it. And so that's the person that I want to, yeah, see this increase for. But I wasn't sure if we actually went through and said, hey, yeah, sure, cut everybody else if we don't feel we need it, and let's focus on who does. Okay, and again, we're looking at positions. We're not looking at who's in the position. That uh, is not what we're looking yeah. at. Any further discussion here? One, two, eighteen, twenty-two. There are our wishes here. Move to adopt. All right. Motion to adopt. Sir. Second. <coughs> First and second. Roll call, Mr. Eads? No. Mr. Peters? No. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Hayes? No. Mr. Hitt? No, I abstain due to personal interest. Okay. And Mr. Stahl? I see no, it's already failed. Okay. No. So that does not pass. All right. One, two, new business. Ordinance 21922. A motion to read by title or number. So moved. Second. All right, ordinance. There we go. This one is a little bit longer. <laughs> All right, ordinance uh, 21922, sponsored by Greg Eads, an ordinance to increase the municipal income tax by 25 hundredths of 1% uh, per annum for a continu continuing period of time commencing July 1st, 2023 of which increase one quarter of 1% per annum shall be used for the purposes of providing funding to pay the cost of acquiring, construction, constructing, furnishing, equipping, improving, maintaining and repairing municipal fire department facilities to pay general operating expenses of the fire department and to pay any expenses and debt services charges for debt incurred in connection therewith and declaring an emergency. Okay, so as I mentioned before, this came from finance. The fire department we know is going to be short on funds. No, there's no <coughs> sands or buts about it. I know how we got here. It's unfortunate that we're at this point. Um, the phrase that's been used many, many times is kicking the can down the road. The fire department will have to be funded from general fund if we don't pass this. Uh, we've tried it twice already with the fire department included. It's failed twice already. The, the overriding theory has been from the people on this city council and the administration and the fire chief is that the only way this will pass is if it's on its own. This is the chance that we're gonna take to get this on its own. We feel this is an appropriate amount to do so. I don't think we have a choice. I'm happy to sponsor this because I don't want to see the fire department not be able to operate. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on that? What's the, um, you, I don't know if you have them right here, you probably don't, but the amount that's a revenue that's generated from the half percent income tax plus the tax credit that out of town workers provide to the fire department, what does that amount does that generate compared to how much operating costs are for the fire department? Well, the, the half percent brings in about <coughs> $2.4 million. <clears throat> the half a percent credit, I don't <coughs> know how much that would be at this time. We'd have to try to go back through the tax department, if at all possible, and find who works in other municipalities or whatever. I don't even know if they have the ability to do that. At the time that that was lifted, uh, it was estimated it was about $360,000, dollars $360, So At that's the time it was lifted, that's been two years ago. And I think I said in finance, the majority of the people that's moved into the city since then uh, probably work in other municipalities so that that credit would be even higher. So the quarter percent would 
generate about half of that. Is that right? Or no, it would. percent would generate $1.2 million. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> okay, what are our wishes here for 219-22? Make a motion to adopt it. Second. We're going to suspend it first. This oh, is new. Okay. We, we don't need to suspend this. We have time. Yeah. We have time for three readings. This has to be done before February 1st. Okay. And I do think You're we right. should give people the opportunity to come in and talk to us about this. Definitely. Quite, quite honestly. Okay. So we can, can, leave, we can leave this on for the I concur meetings. with that. Okay. And then to go right along with that, it, oh, any further discussion, Council, here? Okay. Why did it have an emergency on it then? Because the, the, it when you off. pass it, if you wait the ticks. three readings, it'll have to have an emergency because it's got to be to the election board by mm -hmm. February 1st. If you leave that off, it wouldn't be until the moon. Toward the end of February. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Uh, one, two, resolution two, two, twenty, twenty two. Uh, motion to read by title or number. So moved. Second. All right, first and second. Resolution two, twenty, twenty two, sponsored by Greg Eads. A resolution to place the issue of increasing the municipal income tax by twenty five hundredths of one percent per annum for a <laughs> continuing period of time as provided in ordinance number 2-2022 on the ballot at the election to be held on May 2nd, 2023 and directing the Board of Elections of Madison County, Ohio to conduct such elections and declaring an emergency. Well, folks, we gotta give you a chance to vote on it. So this right. is what this will do. Exactly. Take mm -hmm. it to the ballot and we'll give the people the chance to voice their opinion with their vote once again. And this can be left on also. Yep. All right. Any discussion, anyone? All right. Thank you. On to round table. I had a question. We oh, supposed to sure. have had a, one about the planning commission because we had to have a public hearing about it, but it wasn't brought up. Which one is that? It has to wait till next council. Huh? It has to wait till Yeah, next that wasn't council brought before. to me. The, I just received Oh, what brought you? Okay. okay. It, just it couldn't come on this meeting. Yep. Okay. Just, the, just uh, 219 and 220 is what I received. Okay. All right. On to round table. We'll begin uh, with Mr. Stahl. Thank you, everyone, for coming. It's very interesting. Get advice, opinion, good, bad, and whatever. It's just, like um, she said, it's nice to have people, and not just an empty room, <coughs> people saying what they think and everything. And it's not as easy as it looks sometimes coming up here making decisions. You have to have a lot of look into it and everything. So we just don't do it haphazardly because there's a lot of thinking involved with us. And I think we're headed in the right way. We're looking at a lot of things going the right direction. And uh, after that, I wish everybody a very Merry Christmas, very Happy New Year. And uh, hope everything next year turns out a lot better. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Hitt. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who's here showing an interest in what's going on in the city. It's, I think this is the biggest crowd I've ever seen here. I think I've been on four years, so that's good to everyone showing an interest. Um, hopefully with the, up, the legislation that's on before council, now, hopefully people will show up and voice their opinions regarding the you know, fire levy, fire department levy. Um, you know, there's been a lot of, it seems like, positive input as far as being in favor of that. So um, hopefully more people will turn out and voice their opinions. Um, that's it. Oh, the uh, safety committee meeting is January 10th, 5 p.m. in the meeting room over here. All right, thank you. Mr. Hayes. Okay, first of all, I wanna thank all city employees for jobs well done. Uh, there was a lot of thought into this tonight. Um, I want a rec center as much as anybody does. Uh, kids are the future, but it's like the lady back there said, you gotta have sewer, water, police, and fire. If you have that, then things will come. Um, I've been in contact with uh, Congressman Kerry's office uh, a couple times in the last week. Uh, I'm going to continue to work with Congressman Kerry. 
Uh, see if there's anything that we can do, any type of grants. Of course, those grants, they take time. You just can't walk in and say, hey, I want a grant for a new building. Oh, okay, how much you want? And they hand it to you. It don't work that way. It's like up here. Things just don't work. You just can't throw something down and say, I want it, and you get it. Uh, it takes time. It takes a lot of thought. Uh, I thank everybody for coming out tonight and expressing your views, and I think that a lot of views were listened to tonight. Um, it's not an easy job up here, by no stretch of the imagination. You can't satisfy all the people all the time, so you do the best you can. I prayed very hard about last night and today about this, all these things tonight. Um, I ask the Lord to bless this city. Bless its inhabitants. Keep us all safe and well. 55 years ago tonight, I was at the Silver Bridge collapse trying to save people. Um, we lost 48 people that night. Um, just like to have a moment of silence for those people who lost their lives in the Ohio River that night. Um, Hopefully something like that never happens again. So if we could have just a moment of silence for this people, I'd appreciate it. God bless you all. Merry Christmas and a happy new year to you. I love you all. Thank you. All right, Mr. Robinson. I don't have a whole lot. I'm just... Appreciate everybody coming out, expressing your views. Um, of course, I'm disappointed in the community center, but I also understand everybody's reserve. That's why we shouldn't do it. Uh, just hopefully it doesn't put us back too far. Um, public service is J uh, January 4th at 6 p.m. Uh, have, everybody have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and Go Bucks. Go Bucks. Mr. Peters. Well, I want to thank everybody coming out. I want to... Uh, Appreciate Bob and Mr. Knowles uh, bringing your businesses here in London, wanting to build here. Um, really appreciate that. All right. All right, thank you, Mr. Eats. We counted 24 people in the audience tonight. That's an awful lot. I, I hope they all came out for the right reasons. Hopefully, they heard everybody's explanations one way or the other. Um, I think. London, Ohio is kind of a special place, especially at Christmas time still to this day. It may not be as special as it once was, but I think a lot of people still make it home, and this is home to them no matter where they're at. So I'm glad that those people still come back. Hopefully we can still honor them by doing the right thing as we move forward. So I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, I, and I want to thank Bob and Mr. Knowles for being so patient because it took so long to get to this point so, and, and staying for the whole meeting. So uh, thank you very much. I hope both of your facilities are turn out to be really nice. Thank you very much. Amen. All right. Thank you. And again, I'd like to thank everyone in the community and those that are watching uh, live stream. You can always view those uh, again online if you do have access to internet. Um, and thank you for the suggestion because, you know, we, we have, the one paper and they can choose what to print you know that they want so that is a really good suggestion to put like a newsletter or something with the water bill or something so that everyone's informed about what's going on in their community not hearing about it after the fact feel more involved. exactly and we want everyone to to feel more involved and i again i encourage everyone to get as involved with local government as you can uh, like we said these are positions that are that are listed here. I'm asking if we have an election coming up, go down to the Board of Elections, grab a petition, fill it out, and put one of these names, one of these positions, put your name on one of those positions and run as hard as you can. <laughs> uh, because you know anybody who's really, uh, really wants to see this city grow, please, you know, get a petition, become more a part of it, or at least just come to our council meetings to be a part of this. I really appreciate it. And we do have to hear from you because we cannot make any decisions without knowing what the community <laughs> wants. That's the only way we can make those decisions. We can't hear what you want and then give you something different that you don't want. We can't do that. That wouldn't work. And that would mean that our name needs to be off of that position. 
So thanks again for everyone. Happy holidays. <laughs> and I did uh, forget one thing. Uh, wanted to uh, get a voice vote here. Uh, Mr. Hayes has agreed to become our BPU rep. So I want to <coughs> get a voice vote for everyone to approve Mr. Hayes as our BPU rep. All in favor of approving Mr. Hayes as our new BPU rep, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Thank and with you. that, a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs>